this screw came up to him when he sat on the pool table. And he was like, why don't you write down how you're feeling? Gave him a pen. And he just looked at him dead in the eye and just went, stabbed it in his head like that and just dragged it down like that. Mm. He didn't stay on the wing for long. I was charlied off me now. Playing around with a knife at home, I thought, yeah, I'm going to go and hide him out then. Going to go and kill my own dad. I said, Mum, what are you doing? You're not at work. It's just like, it's all your fault. If you weren't here, he'd love me. That was a quite hard thing to take, that, really. When um, when she's all I, all I had, do you know what I mean? So I knocked on the door, I'm waiting out there, I had the knife behind my back, and I was like, leaned his little bald head out. No offence, John. <laughs> 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 and then uh, he went, no one wants you around here. But as he said that, like, in the moonlight, it, I, it caught his jugular. And I thought, that's my target there. But when you have a bit of Columbia naughty talk, then it all goes a bit wafty, really, doesn't it? Like, mm. one time I thought the BBC were doing a documentary on me and they're watching me through my phone. I threw my phone out the window, ran round to my dealer's house, kicked the back door in, and he was just asleep on the sofa. I thought, I'm on the bloody news. And then I was saying, he knows. He does know. And I was like, what? And then he knows. But you don't know, but he knows that you know. Just tell him, he knows. And then I'm like, so I've gone to my mate, do you know? And he's gone, know what? I've gone in the shop, um, and I'm going, all right. And then I felt in my pocket, I still had the knife. I didn't even second thought it. I just, I looked round, made, made sure there's no one in the shop, just went, whipped out the knife, and put the money from the till in the bag. And I was like, quicker, quicker, come on. You know what I mean? And then I've paid for the beers, Said you can keep the change for that. And then just walked out. This travelling boy called Ned came into my cell once and he said, uh, I need to borrow your clippers. I was like, well, you can't have them now. You have to have a haircut on Saturday. And he came back with two traveller mates. And he goes, give me your clippers. I said, no. And he pulled out a knife. Like he had it in his waistband like that, showed it to me. I said, put that away and we'll, we'll have a fight in here. Because I'm a traveller, not a mug. And then he walked off. And then one day I got back from the gym and I put prison clothes on, waited for him to go in his cell on his own, ran round, kicked the door open and waited for him to turn around because I didn't want to snake him and then just punched him. But my whole hand went in his mouth because he didn't have it. <laughs> so it didn't really work out. We bring you Stevie Lee. And we watched Stevie on Paul Stansby podcast. Shout out to Paul. He's a pure soul. Great guy. Please support his channel. We will put the link for the Stevie Lee interview on Paul's channel in the description box. You may have seen Paul's interview on our channel, Hunting My Brother's Killers. So moving. And today, Stevie's going to tell us his story. I know we're laughing, but there's going to be some graphic content. So just a warning to people. The story has some harrowing moments. There is a story about patricide. There are armed robberies, criminality, addiction, abuse, all involved in this story. But if you put that aside, we had a meal with Stevie last night and his partner, and he's such a brilliant speaker. He's so funny. You know, um, we just had a great laugh last night, didn't we? Mm. So there will be some light-hearted moments in between the intensity as well. So, yeah, huge thanks for coming on. Yeah, yeah. thank you, Stevie. That's all right. Yeah. And, you know, you've got um, a unique way of speaking. Where, where, where's your accent from, if you want to explain to the viewers a bit well, about I'm, where you I'm, grew up? I'm, I'm from um, Kent in Maidstone. So. And sorry if I, if I stutter a little bit. When I get a bit anxious in my head, like my thoughts don't, they try and come out too quickly and it's like a, yeah, it's a bit of a struggle. But yeah, from uh, Maidstone in Kent. So that's that's where, now living up north, but I'll never change my accent. And you sound a bit London, your accent. Uh, Were you ever living in London? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I lived in Putney for a while. Um, and yeah, my cousin lives in Lewisham, so I spent a lot of time there. 
So, yeah. so, so what was it like for you as a kid and what were your parents well, like? Well, mm. well, well, do you know what? Um, I was thinking about this last night about, so, you know, um, there was there was um, trouble time like growing up and that. So not, not, not all the time, but uh, I can't think of anyone's childhood that's been, you know, particularly like, I, I can't think of anyone that, that would have had a childhood that's been that amazing and nothing's ever happened. So um, it used to uh, define how I carry myself, my behaviour, um, what I did and how I felt about myself. But I've actually done a lot of work around it. Um, and it's I've sort of let go of that sort of stuff because um, I blamed my mum a lot for certain aspects of it. Are you able to describe what those aspects are? Well, um, yeah, it's it's a uh, it's a bit awkward because I because like I said on the Paul Stansby's podcast, I didn't I don't really want to upset my mum or gotcha. or anything like that. Um, you know, she was only sixteen when she had me. Uh, she was from a strict. My granny was a strict Catholic lady. She's a lovely lady, but but she goes by the walls of the church. She's Irish. Um, so when my mum fell pregnant, uh, she was asked to leave the family home, unfortunately. Um, so and my mum was a really intelligent woman. She was uh, she went to a grammar school for girls. She was high grade. Um, she worked in Safeways as a checkout girl. Um, and actually, my dad, if you can call him that, um, was a trolley boy in Safeways. That's how they met. Um, yeah, and it, and it was just, it, you know, I won't really go into it too much because it's her story. It's not really, but um, uh, I've got it all written down and stuff like that. But, you know, she'd done the best of what she could. Um, we managed to get a flat uh, in, in Borough Green which is in Kent, um, and uh, yeah, we, we were just, it was for, for a time, it was just me and my mum against the world of, you know, uh, I do, va this is a vivid memory, I remember, um, because my mum was working, she wasn't, but I, I was always at childminders or stuff like that, because she was working, so she worked six days a week in that West, as, um, and then she was trying to do a typewriting course in the evenings, and it was just yeah. So some, I remember we didn't we didn't have a, anything to eat for that particular day or or something. So um, there was like a cake tasting event in town in Maystone where you could come in and like eat try cakes, and then so we went in there to have a meal. I know it's but but I just remember uh, like I remember walking over there. I must have had some muck on my face or something. She goes, come here, look. They'll think you look like, you know what I mean? We've got to be. And then, but but bless her, like, I, yeah. so I, I, it, when I look back, I think, you know, because we must have been eating them cakes like they're going out of fashion because we were, you know, and if people must have been looking and stuff like that. I mean, I, I actually, I, I remembered this the other day. I don't know what show, it, this is in the 80s. I don't know what show it was, and I still can't find it now. I don't really want to bring it up for my mum to ask her. But there was a sort of a show like Jeremy Carl, and my mum went on it, and I remember watching her because she had an eighties perm. Was it Trisha? It might have been. I don't know. Whoever it was in the eighties, my mum went on it to talk about being a, and what 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 my real dad was doing. Right. I, I, yeah, I'll have to. I don't. This is the era of Jerry Springer, is it? Not, but that's America, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So I don't know what it would be. I think, be, but I guess, English yeah. equivalent was I think back Trisha then. was before Jeremy Kyle. Yeah, because I remember being at my Auntie Deb's watching her on TV. Yeah. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to find that. Cause I, I can, I, if I can picture her sitting there with an 80s poem, on, and I was like, my mum's on TV. So, yeah. And where, sorry, and where was your dad at this point? Oh, I don't know. Sloshing about. Sloshing about. What age did he leave? Oh, well, well I'd... I'd he, he, he they, his family tried to, um, well, this is all part of the reason why I tried to murder him one day. And that was a few years later. I know it sounds a bit, but uh, 
Yeah, I was like, but it all step, you know, the anger built up, and then yeah, oh, we'll really killed him one. Yeah, we'll get to that, but yeah, definitely. Um, so, uh, but he's, oh, what an, I know he was young. He was seventeen, but gosh, he, he didn't. He turned up to court and said he didn't even know my mum. So I had to have a DNA test. Never paid child maintenance. Never see him. I, I, I don't know what he was. Um, it's quite a horrific incident, but. Uh, I hope my mum doesn't mind me saying this, but um, because she she told me once that when she was pregnant, she left Safeway, and he was putting pressure on her to have an abortion, and the whole family was when I mean, they tried pick they tried kidnapping her, taking her down to London, all sorts of stuff like that. Um, and uh, so she was walking home pregnant in the dark country road. Pregnant with you? Yeah, with with me. Yeah, um, and then. Uh, he, he drove past with his new girlfriend, pulled over, bundled her in the car, beat her up, like punching her in the stomach and that. I remember her saying it, saying this to me, like, what did you do then, Mum? And she was like, I just curled up in a ball and just said, get off me. And and, and when she said that, I, it, even though I was, I was never, I was, I was there, but I wasn't, but I, it, I imagined it and I thought, doing that to my mum, like, you know what, this is, this is the kind of man he is. Um, and I, I, I didn't meet him till I was about 20 mm. properly, you know, so we just, we just, yeah, we just carried it. So we were living in flat in Burrow Green and just the two of you, just the two of us for a little while. Um, my cousin and my best mate, Liam lived opposite and, and he's, he's been my best mate ever since we're still best mates today. So, and, and I, I love him to bits and he's. You know, it, it, when I was in prison, he came every month with my brother Pat um, through thick and thin, and I, I, you know, all the years, and I've been an absolute moby sometimes, and it's like, God, why are you doing this stuff? But he's always stuck. Them two boys have always stuck by me, you know. Um, so yeah, just knocking about of him, and my mum was introduced to his uncle called called Bob, and uh, he then became my dad basically, just like. Going back to when you was a kid, then what was it like entering school? Uh, it was all right. I was, I, I, I do remember. A st I was telling my girlfriend actually, like, because you used to have tuck at break time, and I never bloody had anything. And this girl once, she had she had a four finger Kit Kat, and all I wanted was one finger or half of one, and she was like, "No, you're not having it." <laughs> so I was like, "Right," I, I, I just snapped it off her and just chucked it all in my mouth like that, and the teachers <laughs> saw me, and I had to go and stand by the wall for. For the rest of the break, but I thought, <laughs> how's it? She's like, can I have a bit of your Kit Kat? And she went, no. <laughs> I was like, right, well, I'm <laughs> yeah. So I, I was getting, you know, I, my favourite thing was fighting, yeah. and there was a girl from the yeah. older school that used to come down every break time and watch me fight, so, and she used to stand there and watch, and I'd be like, you're right. She had, I remember she had glasses like that. She was right. And then she'd just go off again. I don't know who she was. <laughs> she was admiring your fighting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It was, yeah. But it was all, you know. What kind of things were you fighting over? Just oh, so no. It was just play fighting, you know, like yeah. wrestling and stuff. I found it. I don't know. I just liked it. I don't know. <laughs> but, yeah, it, you know, it's, um, yeah, my mum was working hard. I went, went a lot of childminders, though, and <clears throat> one of them, she uh, she was a bit nuts. She threw a, um, a pot at me once of soup. For what reason? I don't know. She was shouting about something. I think her husband had left her or something. But then she had to go out and say to my mum, look, I've, I've done... And my mum was fuming, so I never went back to her. But, yeah. Uh, and also, a funny story is, um, I used to go to this childminders, and she was horrible. Like, my friend Mickey used to be sick in his, on his plate, and she'd make him scoop it up and eat oh. it again. Yeah. That's it. And one day, like, they dared, because Madonna was on the TV and she was she was a bit of a salt back then. She still is, I think. But um, so so they dared, they dared me to go and run, uh, run over there and kiss her on TV. I did. I got caught. What and, happened? Well, I got the slipper. The mm -hmm. slipper just come from across the room and just, oh, I was like, oh, my God. And it ran off. But yeah, it was a, uh, yeah, strange time that. Has that put you what, off watching McDonald these days? No, no. <laughs> no yeah. But um, but my, I didn't realise one of the guys there was my cousin Gavin's, my my real dad's nephew, and then we, apparently we looked like each other. 
So that was weird, wasn't it? We went to the same childminders. And you never knew? No, I never knew. I met, I met him like years later at, uh, at my nan's f funeral, his mum's funeral. Like, do you remember going to that crazy woman's house? I was like, yeah, I know. So I was there as well, and then like, it was weird. So yeah, it's all world. So you're always at childminders. Yeah, yeah, you know. But my mum was just trying to do her best. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And stuff like that. But but you know, um, I, I called Bob Dad, and and uh, he was very good. Like it just, he used to like smell of engine oil because he was a motorbike mechanic, and he and he used to toss me up in the air and like. We used to go out on the motorbikes and stuff like that, you know. It was just really good. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I really loved him. Yeah, and 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 I still do. Yes, he lives in Thailand now and he's he's happy and so I'm really happy for him. You know, I let him down a lot in, in later on, and but you know, just just getting better is it's good for him really. Were you interested in school subjects or sports? I really liked English and history. Like write creative writing, yeah, sports, yeah. I I I I, I liked football, um, so yeah, I played a lot of football. Obviously, wrestling. So yeah, it was, yeah. I can right. envision you as a, like a bit of a class clown. Was that the well, case? Well, yeah, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I got told off once for putting some boy's pee bag mm. in the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> for what reason? I don't know. I just don't really think he like. I liked him really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then he had to wear it for PE. No. <laughs> yeah, he did. Yeah. What was in the bag? Out of interest, I don't know shorts and that. So it, you put his whole kit in the toilet. Yeah, and he had yeah. To wear it yeah. wet. Yeah, I think they told my mum about that. Actually, I'll have to ask her if she remembers <laughs> me putting. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I just yeah. Um, but then we, but then I remember one day it all sort of changed. Like, no, my mum was a bit sad. She wouldn't get out of bed and that. And then, well, this basically. What I want to say is, I've got my truth, mum's truth, everyone else's truth, and then the actual truth. So it's just it's just the way I remember it and how I was growing up. But and then uh, and then she, one day she got she said, "Oh, I've got someone that wants to speak to you." Um, and then this voice come on the other end. He's like, "Hello, hello, Stevie. I've heard a lot about you." I was like, "Who the fuck is that?" But then, so I didn't realise it at the time. But I certainly realise it now. This this bloke was going to absolutely turn things upside down. And it's just going to be the next few years are going to be awful. So had your mum separated with Bob? Yeah, and now she's got this new fella. We, suddenly we were whipped off. I was, we we moved to Exeter and then Bristol. Um, I missed Liam. Like I was calling my dad all the time, and then he'd tell me you're not to call him dad. It's, and then all this he. he it was, so that was so we we're up. So that was from about eight till sixteen. The day we, I had to, I had to get my mum out of there when I was sixteen. So you moved to Exeter and eight. sort of the southwest when you were eight. Yeah, and then moved up to Bristol. Yeah, for yeah. what was it like changing school so young? Uh, well, I, do you know what? Actually, I, I I completely forgot. Like something happened in uh, in and 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 things we we're talking about later. Like uh, I went and I I went to a school in a small village in Exeter, um, and it was only run by sort of volunteer. The, what, the, by the time I moved on to another school, they said I, I was back. I was behind three years or something, because they uh, they weren't really giving me the right education. But I, I I remember they said we had health checks one day, and I need to actually look into this because it's quite scary, really. So. They said they had health checks, and we were one by one going up to the headmistress's room. And then, uh, so I went up there, and there's these two old ladies, and they had a camera. They like looked like old Doris's, you know, like uh, with glasses and that. And then they said, "Right, strip off naked and pull down your pants." And I was only about eight, so I was like, I just thought, "All right then." So I stripped, and then they, I remember they took a picture on the big camera. And then she came up to me. And I don't know why. I, I don't know why she done this, but she said she checked my balls. She she went how many balls? I didn't check how many balls you got and count. Press what one two? She said. And then that's it. I went downstairs, and I went to one of my mates. Did you did you have to? Get? And he was like, no. But then this other girl said she did. 
But it was just so, and then, and then nothing was ever mentioned. That's not normal. That's not, I know. But because I, I didn't know, because the, the thing is, the reason why these bastards like do it for you, vulnerable, because they don't know what's going on. I never, I never had sex. I didn't know what was, what was like. What, what, but yeah. Do you think they were passing those photos onto some kind of? Yeah, room? I think I think they were. I, I, yeah, I think they were going to school to school. I, something I really do need to look into. Well, I mean, I'm only three years younger than you, and they never did that to me in school. No. Yeah. Or exactly. Anyway, yeah. I know. Yeah. So it's not the norm. Yeah. No. Yeah. I know. I, 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 I can see that now. But yeah. I was just like, oh. well, you wouldn't have known at eight. No, but I, did, no. I distinctly remember so I taking a photo, and I and I, 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 I do think sometimes, well, where's that photo now? Like, Ooh. so yeah, I know that. that it, yeah, I do, it's, it's yeah. Oh, because I, I know the name of the school, so I don't know whether they would be able to have a record of. I, I, I don't know, but I don't know what to do about that. Wow, that's strong. Yeah. So when you moved down to Exeter, that was in with the new fella. Yeah, yeah, and then we moved to Bristol. So I went to secondary school in Bristol, in Backwell. Backwell. Backwell school, yeah. Um, yeah. We used to have a rivalry of Nelsey school. Yeah. So when we used to, you know, Nelsey school. So when, when we used to play football against Nelsey, like, we have to walk across the fields to get to the football pitch. And the whole school would come out and stand in a line and spit at you and stuff like that. You had to walk, it's like the walk of shame walking through there. Yeah, and and one day I remember being down the coach park on lunch break, and a load of cars came up, and it was a load of six formers from Nelsey, and they tied some year eleven up and chucked him out of the car, and everyone went over and beat him up. It was a really bad rivalry that was between two schools. Yeah, brutal. Yeah. So what was it like meeting your mum's fella for the first time? Oh, I don't know. It just <laughs> well, do to, to you know what? To be looking back, I already had my dad, and that was Bob. You know, so I was like, hey, my dad. Know what I mean, so I, I I did give him a bit of a hard time, but it was like honestly, it was like walking on eggshells with him. Everything was just, and then ah, oh, it's just. I was always out, like I I I'd, I'd just come home, put me school bag in, and go out. I just didn't. But towards the end, because the thing is, I mean, I've I've made peace with all this, but but it was as if they didn't really want me around because. I mean, my mum's been married twice. This isn't a dig at her, but she's been married twice and and once in Barbados and once in Las Vegas. So I haven't been at, you know, um, they were always off on skiing holiday. I mean, I went to a few, but I was always packed off down south to my dad's when they wanted, you know, I, I, I get it because they were newlyweds in their 20s and, but, you know, but, you know, um, but around the time of about, uh, oh, and I lost my finger in 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 uh, in between it as well. How so I fell out of a tree? So I was always out. Yeah, so that's that really hurt. So you were climbing a tree. Yeah, uh, collecting conkers. As you do, conker fights. Yeah, yeah, we used to have them. Now, <laughs> now it's all yeah different. But and then the branch snapped, and and there was telephone, and I ripped it off. Yeah. A te- what a telephone wire? Yeah, like a uh, like. Like a telephone wire. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get what you mean. <laughs> but yeah, so and I reached out for it and it took my finger off. Like a wire. A yeah, like, like a strong wire. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. And then, uh, and then, this was when I was about 30, 12, 13. But when I la- when I landed, I landed on my knees apparently, and my knees went into my chest, Oof. so I couldn't breathe. And then I got up and passed out and hit my head on the wall. So. I don't remember her, but my mum said when when we were in hospital, they thought I was on drugs because because I'd hit my I had really bad concussion. I was like over here, mum, on my head, son, and all this like trying to play football, and they were trying to hold me down with my finger hanging off. They try and put it back on. Well, they would if it wasn't so young, they would have just chopped the whole lot off because it was about that badly broken. But it's strange, isn't it, that it only caught that one? Yeah, instead of because you wouldn't grip with that. Yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't fall down going like that, would I? What are you doing with that finger? <laughs> oh yeah, I know. It's good for that though. When people are not just giving, and then they're like, "Huh?" <laughs> so, so who found you? Like, were you with mates or anything? Uh, yeah, but then this this older geezer from school uh, was going to smoke some weed, and then he he held my finger on for about half an hour till the 
Tuddy Ambrons came. That's good of him. Yeah, Aaron his name was, brilliant bloke. Yeah. Yeah, he was, and then he was like taking my cigarettes and that, saying, no, not, not, not robbing me while I was, but he was doing me a favour. He's like, you don't want your mum to find them, do you? I was like, yeah, go on, take it all. Good lad. Yeah. Good lad. So, yeah, it, yeah, good stuff. Thanks, Aaron. <laughs> so it sounds like your lifestyle changed from when you were in Kent. You moved down to the southwest. You you were yeah. The, you know your mum was making the best out of life. She yeah. moves in with this man. He sounds like he's doing quite well. I mean, when did it change for you? It was more like my mum. She was uh, she deteriorated really badly. Like her mental health was going wafty. She was like a uh, like. One day I came home from school and she was slumped over the kitchen table with Valium everywhere. And I, I should never have told her this, but I carried it with me for a long time. And you remember before I said about, it just seems like they did, they were just, they didn't really, I was like an inconvenience. So when I picked her up, I walked her upstairs and I said, um, she said to me, I said, Mum, what are you doing? You're not at work. She was like, it's all your fault. If you weren't here, he'd love me. And I was like, Oh, and then, and then, uh, but years later, um, I got drunk and I was like, Mum, you, because I had massive resentments towards my mum, which I've, which I've built on, I've made peace with them when I went to rehab and I've got a sponsor, we talk about them. Um, but, uh, so she denied it for two weeks. So no, I'd never said that. And then one day she rang me up and she said, look, I, I did say that, but it wasn't aimed at you. But yeah, that, that was really, uh. That was really that. That, uh, that was a uh, quite hard thing to take. That really, when um, when she's all like, uh, all I had. Do you know what I mean? I'd, yeah. So, but I don't blame her for that. It, it, because I always think mental abuse is worse than physical abuse. That's the one that takes the toll, and I think that's what she was getting. She the day we left. One day we left. And he was sat in the front room. We just packed a load of stuff and went. And that was, she never saw him after that. Mm-hmm. I did. I went to see him in a pub in, in Rygate. That's where he moved. I just said, what you what, what you done when I was about in my 20s, when I was a bit older and a bit more, like you, you know what I mean, you can't knock me about now sort of thing. I said, uh, you're perfect. You think you can do that to my mum? He started crying. I just went, you're a fucking mug. Just walked out of the pub. So how did he used to knock you about? When well, did that well start? he only really done he only he only really done it once when um was, I think my mum was smoking a lot of weed. So she was a bit stoned all the time. And I remember one day she was downstairs. She was either too scared because I but I really wanted to watch this TV programme. Everyone used to talk about it in Tutor the next day. So and he said, Oh, you've got to turn that TV off. So I turned it on really low, and then he shouted out, you better turn turn that off. And I was like, no, I'm not doing it. And he came running up the stairs. So I jumped up, tried to shut the shut the door, but he kicked it open. But it, but because he knew I had school the next day, he didn't punch me in the face, just punched me in the stomach. Mm. And then, I, But I was screaming for my mum. Oh, this is going to sound really bad about my mum, because she's not a bad person. No. She's, she's, uh, she's, she's had a, you know... But uh, yeah, I was screaming for, and she she just did. I, she just sat down in the front room, just facing the TV. I think she was just too stoned, or just struggling with the relationship. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she was. It was like she wasn't even. I mean, she sent me away to my, my friend Grantley's once because she wanted to hang herself in a banister, but she knew that I would come home from school, and, but because it was punishment for him, she was that. She was angry because he was cheating on her and all sorts of stuff. I think she even told me that he was watching child porn. <sighs> and 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 all sorts. She found stuff stuff like that. He was going on my MSN. Do you know? Do you remember MSN? Yeah. Like like stuff like that. Um, just it was just a complete like. I just I felt like I was losing my mum. Uh, it was because she's gorgeous. My mum is like, and she just wasn't. Yeah, and uh, yeah. It, I mean, I she I think she even said that he. He invited the woman he was cheating with round for dinner. What with her? Yeah, and she cooked dinner. It was all, it's a weird old turnout. And I wasn't privy to the audit information. I, I don't really want to know now. But what I saw was bad enough. So I, so basically we rang up my granny and said, we've got to come home. And we just, I, I just finished my GCSEs. 
And uh, one at, at first day of sixth form, next day I was gone. Never got to say goodbye to my friends or anything. I still kept in touch with a few of them, but yeah, we were back, and then we were back in Maidstone yeah. with my granny. Yeah. So, yeah, but it had to, otherwise my mum wouldn't have survived that. Like, you know, it was, uh, yeah, it's quite, you know, to see a lot like that, it's a bit, you know, a bit naughty, really. So what was life like for you guys back in Middletone? Well, I was back with Liam, wasn't I? <laughs> yeah. And my dad was about, you know, it was all right, yeah. I liked it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I went to college. And then the best thing in the world, the best thing that's ever happened to me happened. My mum got back with my dad and they had a little girl called Imogen, who is my angel in the dark. I feel like, oh, she's, she's so amazing. She's 20 now. She goes to Bristol Uni. She's like, she's so clever. She does, she, she fights for, for prisoners with mental health and stuff like that. And she, oh, I'm getting a, I just love her loads. She, I call her the angel in the dark. She, when my mum brought her home, she was like a fat little hairy ball. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I thought my mum had brought a cat home. <laughs> but she had, we used to call her the Michelin woman because she had elastic. Oh, yeah, the elastic the band. Chubs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I love her, yeah. And um, she's like my, you know, she's like my, my best friend. And I'm so happy for her. And do you know what? My mum's are really good with Imogen. They're, they're, they're like that. Um, and, and, and if I had to go through all that so Imogen didn't have to, I'd fucking do it all again. Do you know what I mean? So it was worth it. Do you know what I mean? And what an amazing young woman she's turned out to be. Uh, I felt really bad when I went to prison. She was 14 and um, I, I tried to tell my mum that I went travelling, tell her I went, to, she's not fucking stupid. You know, so. But now she she, she does cr criminology. So she she's done, she's, she works for probation. She, she helps, she goes talk. She went into prisons and interviewed prisoners about their mental health, are you all right? She's campaigning for treatment rather than punishment. Like, just, you know, That's so, yeah, yeah, work. yeah. And uh, I was at college. Um, uh, is it all right? Yeah, it's all right. So life was settled for a while. Yeah, it was all right, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, it was all right, yeah. But then, yeah. Yeah, I'm just trying to think during that time because that was that that was right on the cusp of wait before the craziness happened. You see, how old are you at this point in the story? Then, like 17, late teens, seventeen, eighteen, yeah. So you've gone back to college. Yeah, life was settled. You had your little sister. Yeah, um, but my me, me mum split up with my, my dad, and then see, my gripe with my mum isn't what happened back then in growing up because she'd done her best. My resentments lied with what happened after because I felt like if I'd have had more support, I mean, look, I made my own choices, but they weren't, they weren't made easier because she split up with my dad. She decided to move up north because my granny had moved up north now um, and she was going to leave me behind. And I wasn't ready because I was still in college, um, and and I begged her to take me with her uh, because I, all my family had moved out of Maidstone. Then I was the last person. I, I mean, I had friends, but it's not really the same, is it? And I don't think I was ready to, you know. I think I was about eighteen or something. And I remember her taking me around to a, a bed sit to look at, and I looked in it, and I was like, oh, it's more like a crack den than a bed sit. And I just came out and just cried and said, look, Mum, I, I can't, you know, can you just take me with you? And she said no. Before that, she was always mentioning, oh, why don't you join the army? Why don't you do this? And and it's just a bit like, so I felt that. <sighs> so, uh, yeah, and then she left. And then, so, yeah, and then, and then uh, met, well, Met 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 um, my real dad, which was a really bad decision, actually. How did that come about? Well, um, my mum found his his mum's address, 
So I went round there and then she's and then so met um it's just I wish I hadn't. Because I was all so I was, so I had all this stuff that I still hadn't dealt with from what happened with my mum's husband and all that stuff. That was all locked there. Then my mum and then and I met this fucking dickhead. And then and then in the midst of it, because I, I, I was never into drugs, never really liked smoking weed. Like I remember one day, uh, there was a there was a geezer at school who was supposed to stay at my house. Someone offered him a bit of speed, and he went to take it. And I went, "You you can have that, are you?" He went, "Yeah, I am." I said, "We well, ain't fucking staying at my house." Like I really, but one night I was out, and this guy offered me a line that I, that I knew through mutual friends offered me a line of cocaine. Sniffed out and I thought, wow. Mm. All my negative thoughts about myself are now positive thoughts. I this anxiety that I've got is completely gone. I you know, this is amazing. And then so it started off as a social thing and then very quickly it became unsocial. Where you're doing it on your own and stuff like that. Um and when so so I was meeting Gavin and he'd he'd not turn up or turn off his phone and I'll be waiting for hours so just stuff like that but I managed to meet my meet my little sister Jess and this is strange actually before I knew I had a sister called Jess I was driving along the road one day and there's a little girl make it she'd made her own cards she must have been about 10 and she was selling them on the street and I, and I drove past and looked at her and she looked at me I thought well, that's weird no, a year later, that was my sister. Oh, wow. Yeah, Jess, yeah. So me and her were building up a relationship, and I said, whatever happens to me and your dad, you know, you're always my sister. Um, like, she used to ring me at night and say, oh, oh I'm really upset. I was like, what's, what's happened? Do I have to get the boys in the van or what? And I have to, someone just kissed my friend. And all this, <laughs> like, you know, sort of that sort of stuff. But, um, yeah, and then, and then, uh, so, but then my mental health was get. I, I, I just was I could feel myself just going downhill, and Gavin was making me ill. Because it it, 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 it used to make me feel like I was, a, I was a little boy. Like, I was just so trying to impress him. Okay, and then he, he used to talk to me like I was a fucking little div. Like, just, like, don't call me dad. And I, but I was just like, oh, I've got, like, I remember I got him a present for his birthday, and I, oh, I've got you. He's like, I don't like it. Oh, okay, you're right. Well, he didn't like his own present. Yeah, and stuff like that. He was just, he's a horrible bloke. Do you know what I mean? Just, it was just, I wish, you know, the only good thing to come out of it was I met Jess. But then the day I told him, I can't see you anymore. Like, it's, it, you know, it's, it, it, he just, he was just hoping one, that I'd just disappeared and I'd never have come found him. He's got his own family and it's like, but, um, uh, and, but what he done was, he told Jess, my sister, that I wasn't even her brother. That I'd had a DNA test done when I was little, which I did because I the courts had to prove because he wouldn't pay child maintenance. But he's saying, so he says, I don't know who that bloke. And she texts me saying, leave me alone. You, I can't believe you've conned our family. And all. I was like, what? So I've never seen her since. Really? Last time I saw her was when she was about 15. And then I, that that's why. So then I tried I went I went around and tried to murder him. I went to iron him out. Let's talk about that. Yeah. Bit of an extra because I'm not that, you know. But when you have a bit of Columbia naughty talk, then it all goes a bit wafty, really, doesn't it? Like mm. So I was probably about twenty two and I was Charlie'd off me nut. Playing around with a knife at home, I thought, fuck it, I'm going to go and iron him out then. I'm going to go and kill my own dad. Fuck it, he deserves it anyway. <laughs> um, I know, it's, it's just crazy though, isn't it? Because my mental health, along with cocaine and then all this psychosis bollocks that was going on, like seeing, seeing lampposts as witches and shit like that. You <sighs> know what I mean? So was there a build-up to this mentally then, like well, with the I think I, well, this this is a thing that I spoke to Paul about. Yeah, like I think, but because with with mental health usually comes addiction. With addiction usually comes with mental health. 
So this, so I may, I, maybe I always had it, but this cocaine was accelerating it to like, you Next know. Level. Yeah, do you mm. know what I mean? So. What kind of consumption rate were you at and what kind of side effects were you experiencing? Um, well, I was seeing stuff, like having hallucinations. Um, one time I thought the BBC were doing a documentary on me and they're watching me through my phone. So about five in the morning, I threw my, I know it's, I threw my phone out the window, ran round to my dealer's house, kicked the back door in, and he was just asleep on the sofa. He's gone, fuck it, oh, what's going on? I'm on the bloody news. Fucking satellites. And he was like, what the fuck? And, he, and then like, uh, it's just mental. And then I started sniffing whiz off his floor from the carpet. Like, just turn on the fucking news. Go on the internet, Google me. I, honestly, it was like, yeah, that was one, yeah. That was was that actually whiz on his carpet or was that hallucination? Oh, I don't know now. Now you say it, it probably wasn't. <laughs> I don't know what that was. <laughs> yeah, good point. Yeah, yeah. probably. Yeah. yeah. And did you? Is this when you split yourself in two, or was that later? Oh, that was yeah. I split my yeah, yeah. So it, just, just yeah. I mean, I was walking up the road with with a mate, and then like, and then I was saying he knows, he does know, and I was like, what? And then he knows, but you don't know. But he knows that you know. Just tell him he knows, and then I'm like, so I've gone to my mate. Do you know? And he's gone, know what? You know, don't you? Don't fucking me about it, you know. And then he's gone, you're weirding me out, mate. I'm going home. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so just, it was just, uh, I wasn't enjoying it. I was, uh, you know, the first line, I'd, I'd be like, God, I'm loving it, you know? Yeah, I'm the man. I'm going out tonight. And then the third, fourth, I'm fucking hiding behind the sofa like a cat out the window, <laughs> paranoid as fuck that someone's coming around me. And that's the thing, I was twitching. If your phone goes, it, it, honestly, it's horrible. It's horrible for me now. I, I couldn't think of anything worse. Like, I'm, When you split yourself in two, didn't you, one of you stay and one of you go somewhere? Yeah, yeah. Well, that was when I'd done the arm robbery, yeah. So oh, that's later. Oh, well, yeah, okay. yeah. So, yeah. So how did you come up with the idea to... Oh, yeah, it's just... Go just to thought, your dad? I just thought I've got nothing on. Might as well just go and iron him out, yeah. Just pop round there now. Yeah, that's the thing. That's my, f yeah. Uh, so I just walked around there, had some headphones on. I think I was listening to a bit of Metallica. And then um, just walked around it. It's got a massive farmhouse. And uh, I think it was about midnight or something like that. And um, he's got, he's got like, the, you know, like stable doors. So yeah. you, op you open one and the other half. So I knocked on the door. I'm waiting up there. I had the knife behind my back and I was like, and then I was like, and then he um, leaned his little bald head out. No offence, <laughs> <laughs> And then uh, he went, no one wants you around here. And I was like, well, come out, come out here and say that. Like, come on, mate. Come out here. Come talk to your son. And then he's like, just go away. But as he said that, like, in the moonlight, it, I, it caught his jugular. And I thought, that's my target there. So I whipped the knife round and went. I went, because I, I must have been... But here to there. Yeah. So uh, two steps and that's it. I'm jabbing him. And right in the neck. I was just going to... And then... But then... I'd, it's, it's like a higher power because I believe in this higher power thing. Because I would have been... I would have been still in the shovel now. You know what I mean? Um, but Jess, my sister, just turned on the lights <clears throat> see what was going on. So she looked down and I thought, oh, I can't murder her dad in front of her, can I? So I just said, oh, get you next time. And walked off. And what does he do? Pissed his pants, probably. I don't know, but... He saw the knife? Yeah, he saw the knife, yeah, yeah. Uh, Did he report it? I think he's reported me a few times, yeah, I think. But, yeah. And he didn't come round for you? No. No? No. So I don't know where... I don't, I, I don't actually know whether he did or not, but... I know he has a couple of times, but I've... The thing is... I know it sounds bad, but he don't deserve that, does he, really? But still, I just... What happened on the other occasions that he reported you? Uh, well, one of them, I was just outside his house and he said he was going to ring the police. But um, I've never had them come round or anything like that. It's just what he... Maybe he's just saying it because 
you know. To get rid of you. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, it's, that would have that would have been a life changer for both of us. When we wake up in the morning, we get out of bed and we start our day with Coro Snacks. Coro is a healthy snacks brand focusing on bringing additive-free natural ingredients to their customers with fair prices in bulk packaging. They have everything from nut butters to free from baking ingredients to cooking essentials and, of course, the snacks. Look what's in this gem. It's the vegan power mix from Coro. So we have a mixture of nut kernels, dried fruit, Cacao nibs, soy crispies, and hemp seed Ooh. hold. What are these little red ones? Wait. Look at this thing. Mmm. Mmm. That's good. Fresh and healthy. So what makes Coro special in comparison to others? Coro's quality management team carefully and regularly reviews the quality of their products. For a 5% discount on Coro's products, use the code TRUECRIME with no space in between true and crime. The link to Coro's online shop is in the description box on YouTube. Thanks for supporting our sponsor. So as you're walking away from that scene, what's going through your head? Uh, well, I'm still, I haven't got any rational thoughts because I'm still Charlie Hoffman. I just thought, oh, well, I, d I didn't think of any anything of it really. It was just one of them things, but... Yeah, I can still I can still remember him like just leaning out like that and saying them words. No one wants you around here. That's what he said. But that's I, honestly that that time in my life I was just I was just uh, just just it was just like my, I, I don't I don't know how to describe it. It's just mental. Just looking back on the things. Um, how are you financing your coke consumption? Well, that's that's. That's if, I, I was always working, but whether I was doing window cleaning or stuff like that, but I'd never have I'd never have any money. I was sick in loads, getting into trouble, so you know, sort of like that sort of thing. So, did, were you doing any naughty dealings to get your? Um, a few here and there. Yeah. You know. What like? Uh, I don't know whether I can say really because I don't want to end up just it's in the past, isn't it? Yeah, avoid mm. that. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, but then, so, but I, the thing is, my mum said to me uh, that she always used to wonder the situations that I get myself into, people that I was hanging around with, and stuff like that. And that, looking, it, I mean, one day we were, I was driving down the road with these couple of fellas, and they stopped at a petrol garage. Someone owed them one of them money, and he filled up his car with petrol, and then filled up a five hundred mil bottle of coke. And he said, come on, we're going around this, this bloke's house. And when we went round, we went round this flat and this guy wouldn't answer. So this guy went round the back and then come to the door and let us in. And he just basically poured petrol all over him, the, the 500 mil, flicking matches at him. And the geezer was, it was just, but it's, it's like a seedy, the drugs world is like a seedy, and, I, and I'm not that sort of bloody person. So, sorry, you and your friend went round this guy's house? It just, I wouldn't say a friend, just... A person I know that through sort of doing coke, really. Do you know what I mean? And your friend poured petrol on him and started flicking matches. Yeah, yeah. Did he owe money or something? Yeah, he owed money, yeah. yeah. It's quite a nice flat as well, actually. Did it light? No. No. But did, did they get the money out of him? I think he paid like a week later, yeah. But it was just... Yeah. Um, I had a bare-knuckle fight, randomly. Uh... I, I just wanted this one dealer, I owed him a little bit of money and I just decided that I didn't want to pay him. Just thought I don't wanna I don't don't wanna pay you. So uh he said you can come down here and have a fight then. So like, alright. So I went down there to a car park, everyone was standing in a circle. Uh we had a fair play man. I got weighed in and then went home. But that was you know, just, just just a Tuesday night. It's bad, isn't it? It's a yeah. Did that squash the debt? Yeah, yeah. Kicked me on the floor a couple of times. I said, Did that mean I win? Because <laughs> it wasn't fair play, was it? No. So actually, technically, I won that fight. Technically, 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, that's all right, isn't it? So, yeah, yeah, he squashed it. He said, you could... silly bollocks, didn't you? How much roughly was the debt? It was only about 40 quid. Oh, wow. Yeah, I know. Yeah, <laughs> just, yeah, just uh, silly, like, like because I, I, I have this impulsive nature. Like, me and my girlfriend and her dad were in an antique shop in um, York the other day, and I had this undescribing urge to just run and jump through the window. I don't oh. know why. It's just, I, but I, obviously I didn't. But, yeah, I just, just really felt like I said to like Savannah, I said, well, I just had a mad thought then. I wanted to run and jump through the window. Yeah. But, yeah, so uh, my 20s was a bit, um, that's the thing, putting, putting yourself... And talking about putting yourself into situations. That, so this is going to be uh, quite quite hard to sort of describe. But um, so when I went to rehab, um, we had to read our life story. And um, I said something out loud for the first time. Ever. Bearing in mind I was in rehab when I was 35. I'm 37 now. And this incident occurred when I was about 25. So I kept it to myself for 10 years. Um, still quite hard to say out loud now, but really feel like if this can help someone that maybe it's happened to them, then um, uh, so I um I was at I was I was at uh, I was at a pub with some people, then went back to there was a girl and a bloke, both the people I knew from the pub. I was in bed kissing the girl and um, I passed out and when I woke up I was in bed with this bloke and when I turned around uh, he, was, he was looking at me like and I, um, and I could just tell that I'd been raped. Um, I didn't tell anyone. I um and, I, and when I close my eyes, sometimes I can still see his uh, see his face, like the way he was just smiling. I didn't tell anyone. I got up, I cleaned myself, and then I went and played football like I did on every any other Saturday afternoon. Um, tried to tell myself that like uh. It's just one of them things that happens. It comes with being a drug addict or, you know. But I know it did really affect me because when I read it out in that life story, I burst into tears. Um, yeah, so... And actually, I said this on the Paul Stantory podcast as well. Um, and actually, an amazing thing happened where a guy I knew in prison got in touch with me. Obviously, I won't mention his name. And um, said that a similar thing happened to him. And now he's going to go to the police. So, yeah. what an amazing uh, thing just to help one person. But... Um, I sent this guy a message on uh, on 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 uh, on 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 Facebook like a couple of years like I don't know it's just maybe like a couple of years after and said I know what you've done to me and he just sent back a a uh, smiley face so I think I was looking for like a Acknowledgement or something, but or an apology. Yeah, well, maybe. Yeah. So, 
Um, try not, try not to let it affect. Us. It does sometimes, though. Like uh, I can't help it. It's like it's always sort of there, really, and I because it's a uh, a bit not not like toxic, toxic, uh, toxic masculinity. Masculinity. But it's like. It's a bit embarrassing. I know, I know, and but for a bloke to, you know, it's just a, uh, yeah. It really wasn't your fault. Yeah. Um. But I put myself in such. See, um, I've asked my sponsor about because because I, I I'm in recovery for a cocaine addiction. I don't. Do, do cocaine anymore and I have a really good sponsor um, and every resentment because I have a massive resentment towards this guy um, uh, but but it the rules are not really the rules but when you go through resentments you have to see your part in it and I said but Kev well, what's my part in it and he just said well <laughs> It's the life you lived, like you. But that's it's a hard one to, because you've almost got to forgive someone. Mm. So, how do you uh, do that? With great difficulty, when something is of that magnitude, because even though what you're saying is correct, because if you, you've got that negative energy in your head unless you forgive them personally you know i'd want that person to be well i can't even say on youtube yeah, what yeah, i want to yeah. do to that person but you said you know earlier on you had a role in it but that person is a predator yes. yeah you were spiked somehow yeah you couldn't have comprehended that that was going to happen so you can't blame yourself you can accept it's happened and try and move on. But it's not your fault. There's no way it's your fault. And this person should be in prison. Yeah. Yeah. Sh- yeah. And, 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 uh, I'm not saying this for all police, but after the, when, when I, when I done the podcast with Paul, I did get in touch with the police and, um, they told me to ring 111. And it's like, well, you felt like they didn't yeah. give you the, what we've learned on this channel is the police, in some cases, people have been fobbed off for years. Yeah. We had one person, it took a 35 years, six reports to the police. Yeah, so, yeah. And some police are all over it. It's mm. just completely random and hit and miss. It seems like each police area has got a different culture, different yeah. priorities. And this is something we're campaigning that across the board, the police go after these people because they yeah. cause so much mayhem. Yeah. They destroy people's lives. Yeah, I don't think you know the actions we're going to talk about further on might not have been committed. Or, or, <laughs> yeah, it's a contributing factor. I think. Yeah, it's a massive yeah. factor. It is through these interviews we've learned that this is childhood abuse or sexual abuse is the root cause of most crime. Because mm. mm-hmm. people want to get in drugs because they don't have to deal yeah, with it, yeah, and then yeah. to finance the drugs, criminality. Yeah. If it isn't yeah. criminality, it's suicide. Yeah. Mm. And a lot of them commit suicide as well, yeah. Mm. And these predators don't get hardly any sentences. No, I know, yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. I, do you know what? Well, if anything would have ever happened to my little sister and I'd found out that they'd already been charged with an offence before and let out, able to do it again, I don't know what I'd do. Yeah, it's best we don't see on YouTube. No, no. yeah, yeah, um, definitely. Yeah. Um, I feel the same. So, yeah. Do you know what's a really strange thing? Like, sometimes I think, because uh, now I've said it out loud, I can't take it back. And it was sort of mine. Even though it was hurting me, it was sort of mine and like sort of like, you know, does, does that make sense? Like. So did you never tell any of your friends? Never told a soul, yeah. No. Well, people bury trauma 
And until they let it out and talk about it and get help, it, it's it's like you've got your demons and those demons are just going to be active, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. Until that's... you work through it. And a lot of people, I mean, you've got the bravery to go in and talk about it. Yeah. On camera to a lot of people. Yeah. We salute you for that. And that means you're, you've faced your demons and you're working through that now. Yeah. Other people that don't. Yeah. They just spiral into addiction or commit suicide, like Jen said. Yeah, mm. I'll take. I, that's the thing. Like, I wanted to say this on here because there might be someone, like, even if it's just one person, like, like from whatever. Paul, the Paul Stamsby podcast that I done was successful because one person was able to say that's happened to me. I'm going to the police. You, you do know there's many, many victims who have been through abuse yeah. rape who like yourself kept it inside yeah and yeah they might watch this and come forward and actually get the help they need to have yeah, a happy so, fulfilling yeah. life instead of keeping it inside yeah so you're doing wonders well I, well me and my cousin liam we 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 looked at maybe hopefully setting up a a forum where people because it's hard to talk to it's hard to know who to talk to Who's the right person? Your mum? Your sister? Your best friend? A stranger? A therapist? Who? So, um, and we're actually going to uh, call it Mind Your Head, which would be quite cool, wouldn't it? Mind Your Head? Yeah, as in like, keep your head in, like, mind your head. Um, but unfortunately, a company in Scotland's got that name, so it might be something like Mental Wealth or something like that. But a forum where people can anonymously or like talk like with the same sort of issues talk and get responses from each other if you get that established we could link it below this video Brilliant. yeah that's yeah. it just just a sort of a just a little safe place where people like can just pop a question in i'm feeling like this how and then any, anyone in the community can answer or that would be brilliant wouldn't it do you yeah. think did you feel back then you had nowhere to turn to after it happened I just, I just, well, I don't know. I just kept, like, it's like a, it's like a, I put it in the, buried it in the foundations of the house, and uh, used cocaine as concrete. Just, you know what I mean? Just like, just, yeah, like that. Sounds and, like you was in shock on the day, and you just yeah. went through the motions. I mean, of I mean, playing I mean, soccer. Yeah, because I was, I was official banter man at football. So I was, you know, turn up like that, and then that day I, I must, I, I think someone said to me, "Are you all right? You're a bit quiet." Oh yeah, I'm fine. Autopilot. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about the next day? I don't. I do. Do you know what? I don't know. Probably got on it. Probably just getting more coke. Yeah. Just mm. self medication. Yeah, because the the, the the thing about cocaine is it numbs your feelings. That's what. And then you, I've never had, well, because I always have, no, even now, I, 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 obviously I suffer from the mental health now, which I'm, hope, but I have negative thoughts entering all the time. You put a bit of cocaine in, these negative thoughts, like, so I, so say, say for instance, one thought is, oh, I'm really ugly. Well, have, have a line of cocaine, I'm the best looking bloke out there. Do you know what I mean? It, that's, you know, that's why it's, it's, it's a dangerous drug, that. It's a full sense of confidence. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah. You know. So, yeah. So how long did the binge last? I, do you know what? I, do you know what? It's really strange. I remember going to football, but I don't remember anything after that. Like, you just went deep. I don't even remember years after that. Can you remember snippets? Because I found in my heaviest years of drug, drug abuse and alcohol abuse, I have so many memory blanks. But, yeah. I can't yeah. remember small snippets. But I don't know which matches, which year or which month. Yeah. or this, Honestly, between, I'd say, the heaviest abuse from 24 to 30, I I couldn't tell you. It's just if I had to have an alibi for where I was in that time, God, it could be, it could, I could have been in about, I don't know, I just, I, I, I wouldn't like to say, I don't know. What a waste of... It's, well, it's just existing, isn't it? So where you just... And the people you hurt along the way, your family. Because 
I'll tell you what, when I when I was when I was in Rio, I'll tell you, he won't mind me mentioning this, but this guy's mum wrote a poem and we all read it out. Oh my god. About how even though he was going through his addiction, she was as well, his mum. Even though she wasn't taking any or drinking. And it, and one 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 uh, sentence in it was like, You're on a one way ticket to hell and I'm right there behind you. Oh, I broke my heart that. And then I just thought of my mum and my sister and you know, just terrible, yeah. So in those years then, that's a blur. Yeah. What can you remember coming out of that blur as the next major incident in your well, life? Well, this, this, this is this. Um, when I was uh, in Christmas, uh, Christmas, two thousand and sixteen, I was just not really mentally well. I went to the doctors and said, oh, "I'm not right. Something is." Not at me, I don't know. And he said, I'll oh, go and see this lady down the mental health unit. And she was she just put me on a set of scales, put me in Pembury Hospital for 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 five five days, and they didn't even know why I was there. They were like, I just had a drip on me. So five days I come out, so I carried on. And I was doing roofing at the time. And I had a I had a work I had a work truck and in March two thousand seventeen I woke up one day, didn't go to work, didn't advertise anything on Facebook, didn't didn't tell anyone, just decided that's it, I'm going to go today. Um, and then, so I sat downstairs on the sofa, my girlfriend rang me at 8 o'clock, like she usually does, my girlfriend at the time. Um, I said, oh yeah, like, no worries, anyway, you have a good day. I went out in the truck, tied the hose pipes to the exhaust, put it through the window, sat down, put the engine on, listened to a bit of music, and started to feel all warm, tingly, felt all nice. It was like a, like you just had a, a joint or something, just had a puff of a joint, and I I felt thought about my sister and how she'd be upset for a little while, but I kept letting her down. So in the long term, it'll be better, and then. Um, as I was just about, I remember just about to go to sleep, uh, because I, I've, uh, I've, I've, I've like cried when I've been sad, but I've never actually managed to cry when I've been happy before. And for that split second, the tears were in my eyes, I was so happy that it was finally going to be over. Like, the, the, my mind would just stop on me all the time and I just that was gonna be it and I was free and I remember saying to myself I might have even said it out loud I'm ready I'm really ready to leave this world and then next thing you know I got arrested because it was in a public place so you, you, you can be arrested for trying to commit suicide in public even though it was on the driveway so how they, did you get found they, one of the neighbours rang. So, yeah, they just they just came, dragged me out of the, out of the truck and arrested me. Can you remember that? Yeah. And then, because I wasn't on drugs or anything then. Right? No, it's because I thought you might have passed out. But no. Well, yeah, well, I'm, I, well, I certainly remember being in the police car. They took me to hospital to get checked out for carbon dioxide, poisoning, whatever. And then... um put me in a mental institute, like a mental thing for the night. And I was just, I was in a room. I remember talking to Paul about this, like, they don't, I was in a room with a chair and nothing else. And then just, I didn't know why I was there. No one, they, you couldn't see over the walls or anything like that. It was basically a prison. And then, so I was sort of like saying there and then, all these nurses and doctors in white coats came around about three in the morning with with a clipboard, and I said, "Look, I've got to go home. I need to go to work tomorrow. It's not, I'm going to lose my job." And they just let me out, and then I went home. Did and they then, interview or question you? Uh, no. Just said, Did you know, "Is that what you want to do?" I said, "Yeah, I just don't want to go home now." And then, so I've carried on, and then. 
And then, so my girlfriend's had enough of me. So one day I've gone to work and I said, oh, do you wanna, do you wanna go out tonight? Go and, bit, go and get a bit of dinner. So I can't, I'm doing, a, I'm doing hair at home. So um, I was like, all right then. So I just carried on getting on the packet on a Monday, as you do. And then uh, my mate rang me and said, I've just seen your girlfriend walk into this pub with this geezer. I thought, all right, I'll go down there. So I've gone down there and it's summer. This is, this is July. Or, or I end of June, and there's loads of people outside. There's like hundreds of people, and I've seen her there having tapas with some geezer. So I've gone bowling over there, like, just sat down, like, you all right? She's gone, yeah? I said, who's that then? And he went to stand up, he went, you sit down, mate, come on. But, and I was like, look at you, sat there like butter wouldn't melt and all that. And then and I caused a bit of a scene, and everyone was looking over. So I said, oh, just fuck off. And walked out. So as I've walked out, I thought everyone's looking over like, and I'm feeling like Clint Eastwood. Like, <laughs> like I've just walked out of a bar. I thought I'll, I'll make a dramatic. There was, there, anyway, there was a table full of full of gla empty glasses. I thought I'll just pull that up, smash the glasses everywhere. So I went to grab this table and everyone was looking at me and it was bolted to the floor. Because <laughs> someone, so a load of people had tried to nick them a week before. So, so I was like, <laughs> and I had this laughing start and I was I just kicked a chair and went, yeah. And I just went, oh God. And then what a what a Moby. Um and then uh Yeah, I mean, wasn't so dramatic. But uh and then so I, so I jumped in the car, my mate's gone, what happened? And I said, I made myself all right, tip, just go. And then ended up getting on it all, all week. Um and on the Saturday I was still at work and w went on a date with some girl. Uh, I'm sorry to that girl actually, because the next day I got I was in the paper for armed robbery. Well, do you want to talk us through that date? I think you told us about it last night. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. So I met her, and I'm like, just, I, I just I, I was just looking at her like, all right, yeah. And she was talking. I was like, I don't know what she's saying, but I don't know. I fancy getting on it again. So I text my mate under the table and went, listen, come outside, and I go. So um, I just waited till she went to the toilet and I slipped off, <laughs> jumped in the car and went, go. And then, yeah. How had that date been arranged? Uh, God knows. Can't Tinder? Remember. Might have been, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. So first date, nice First restaurant. date, yeah. Didn't even, didn't even get any food. I couldn't eat nothing. <laughs> so yeah, just had a drink, yeah. I was just like, I don't know what she was saying, but I was just like, and I was in all my work clothes. I had a big old beard. Cause I, she must have thought, God, I've been catfished. <laughs> <laughs> big time. <laughs> but yeah, and then... <laughs> and then uh, so... <laughs> but, but about two weeks before, I was doing a bit of work on the East Enders set. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I did. I, I, uh, big you know, time. Well, yeah, only doing air conditioning units, but... Still. You know. But I... Uh, <laughs> I got really paranoid that Martin, you know, Martin Fowler, he kept looking over at me. <laughs> I, thought he, I thought he wanted a dust up. And then uh, the one that plays Louise Mitchell, I went all goony in front of her because I went to, because we, we, they all go in the restaurant at the same time. Yeah. So she was coming past and I was in my yard and she stopped me and went, oh, how's it all going? And I was all like, yeah, uh, yeah, it's all right. Uh, um, how's it going for you, sort of thing? And then she was like, "Yeah, all right, yeah." So anyway, and I was like, "I've got to go." I, I, I completely melted. I, I, I went all like, "No, she must have thought, oh, the bloody hell's that?" <laughs> but yeah, and then uh, so anyway, the guy that I was working with, he knocked me for a load of money. So for the for the job sort of thing, so I just went round and nicked his car, and um, nice mate, a Mercedes. Not not like a nice one. Uh, left me bloody Calvin Klein bag in there as well, actually. A little man bag thing. A man purse. Yeah, well, yeah, it was, it was a man's one. But yeah, <laughs> I left it in there. I was gutted about that because I had to give the car back. Because he rang my mum and told her that I'd, so my mum rang me. And went, when she calls me Stephen, that's when I'm in trouble. So the first thing she said was, Stephen, have you stolen someone's car? I was like, no, of course, I don't know what you mean. Right? And then she said, just give it back. 
So he came round and then he started getting lemon about, oh, I'm going to come round and do you and all this. So I was I was already scatty as a, like anything. So I'm walking around the house now with a knife in my pocket. And then I like hiding in the garden, like a gnome with a hat on, <laughs> <laughs> like this, just waiting for him to come round. I mean, people must have been walking past and I'm like this. Just frozen like a gnome in the in the pond. It's really, it's just really irrational and strange. You didn't have a, what's it called, a fishing rod? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, couldn't find one. Hope you're enjoying this podcast. There's a word from our sponsor, Rocket Money. The other day, I had to cancel free Amazon Prime memberships. I had a personal on the UK, Amazon, US Amazon, company account, US Amazon, UK Amazon. Do you understand how hard it is to cancel these bloody things? That's why Rocket Money makes these things so much easier, formerly known as Truebill. The app shows all your subscriptions in one place and cancels what you don't want for you. Rocket Money can even find subscriptions you didn't know you were paying for. Just like with me, with my four Amazon Prime memberships, you may find out you've been at least double charged for a subscription. To cancel a subscription, all you've got to do is press cancel and Rocket Money takes care of the rest. Get rid of useless subscriptions with Rocket Money now. Go to rocketmoney.com forward slash Sean, S-H-A-U-N. Seriously, it could save you hundreds per year. That's rocketmoney.com forward slash Sean, S-H-A-U-N. Thank you for supporting our sponsor, Rocket Money. Links in the description box. Cheers. But yeah, I, uh, it was just, uh, yeah. I just wasn't like, I mean, if you, if you were talking to me like this, I'm like, I, oh, and that's what, so it was Sunday. I'd work on Monday. I thought, I've got to go and get, get a couple more beers because, you know, you're in a right two and eight, Stevie. You know what I mean? You're all like, but I'd split myself in half. Like, so half, because cause I thought, right. What you don't want to do is leave the house unattended because if he comes around, so I said, Stevie, you stay here and I'll go to the shop. And I even said, my, I went up to my flatmate and said, listen, I'm going to leave Stevie here, but don't worry, he's all right. I'm just going to pop up the shop and get a couple of beers. And he was like... And what was Stevie number one saying to you going to the shop? Was he all right with that? Yeah, because he was just going to wait and keep guard. Cool. So it was honestly... When I, but to me, it was like, it's like, you're right with that, Stevie. Yeah, I'm fine, mate, yeah. You, you, you just look after yourself. My flatmate was like, what? Yeah, and then, so I've gone up the shop, lovely sunny day, I'm like, do, 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 you know. And then, uh, so I've gone in, I've, I've, I've gone in the shop, um, and I'm going, all right. And then I, I've, the, the beers were stacked really tight on there, and I, I was like, trying to see, and I was like, I put my hand in and they just went all over, oh. the whole beers. And then the manager came out the back and said, what the bloody hell are you doing? And apparently I'd been in there earlier and done exactly the same thing and they just restacked them. Do you reckon that was Stevie number one this time? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So, so, and I've gone, oh, and you know when someone's shouting at you when you're hung over or something, it's like, oh, I don't need this. And then I felt in my pocket I still had the knife. And this is my impulsive thinking. I didn't even second thought it. I just, I looked round, made, made sure there's no one in the shop, and just went, whipped out a knife and, well, put the fucking money from the till in the bag then. And then they're like, what? And I, went, the man, I said, you fuck off out the back, put the money from the till in the bag. And then, so, and I was like, quicker, quicker, come on. You know what I mean? I'm, and, then, and then I've paid for the beers. That I've, so I took four beers, said, keep the change for that. And then just walked out. <laughs> like, what? what is that? It's, you know, like, what, who does that? Like, you know, and I do feel really... I, look, I, I, I sent a letter to the people in the shop and I hope they're all right and all that because that's not really a thing. <laughs> but, 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 yeah. I only went... I literally just went up the shop to get some beers and I've come back, come back, and uh, got the till. Like, it's just, you know. Then completely forgot I'd done it. So you've gone back to the house? Yeah. And Stevie what, once. Yeah, what did he Stevie, say? What are you doing with that bunny? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't... Well, I rang my brother and said, listen, I just think I've done a 
Oh, well, he said, oh, just take the money, just get on a train and go. I was like, nah, it'll be all right. And then, and then I think I forgot I'd done it. So I was Maidstone's most wanted for about half an hour. Yeah, but I was at home. <laughs> and How then, much should you nicked? I don't know. I think they said, in, I don't really know, sitting in the police report, only a couple of hundred quid. It wasn't like... But then I was just outside in the garden in my shorts, just having a beer, and armed old Bill come from everywhere. And I was like, who are you, who, who are you here for? I went, you, you. And then give me a bit of a kick in and put me in the car. And then, uh, yeah, so and I woke up, and then I'm looking at eight years. That must have been quite a sobering thought. Yeah, oh, God. I mean, I woke up in the next door neighbour's gardens, like, just, but waking up in a police cell after doing an armed robbery and you're all over the bloody papers. And I went on a date last night with that girl and I'm thinking, God, she's going to be like, <laughs> what, who is that? Oh, I'm glad that, I'm glad you've slipped off. But <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, and it was just. Did they have CCTV? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, can you... Like you were cool watching it back and what you were acting like. Sure, yeah. It was, just, I, 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 it was all just surreal. And I was like, and the, the brief they gave me, well, I, I, I would have got 16 years. If he'd, he just, I, I just kept looking at him like, and he was like, I don't know. I'm like, well, you're supposed to advise me. Well, your solicitor was really quite crap. Yeah. Public yeah. defender, was it kind of yeah. thing? Yeah. I was like, what, what, do you you think? what do you think I was doing? He's like, I don't know. You're fucked. <laughs> <laughs> Bound to rights. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. But, so, I, I, you know, look, um, <clears throat> I took responsibility for it. I thought, do you know what I said to myself? You've been living your life a certain way for so long. Now, you, 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 whatever's coming, you fucking own up and take it. Because, you know... It's not like oh, I know we had a joke about it, but it's not that's not that's not the right behaviour to do. I needed to be stopped, but but I did go to the and this this isn't justification, but I knew something wasn't right. I tried to get help. I tried to go to the doctor. I knew I knew something was was and luckily I didn't do anything like proper. Like well, I know that's not I mean, but but I hurt yeah. someone. That's really sad that it takes something to yeah. go to that extreme to get the help you need that mm. they didn't help you prior before. And I'm sure it happens with loads of cases with murders and uh, violent acts and armed robberies or whatever, all acts of crime. They've probably gone to get help first and then this is the product. Yeah, of it. exactly. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. the thing. Yeah. So, so yeah. And then, uh, so I'm in, I'm in the shovel. Like, what was it like getting in there? Which Nick was it? Elmley. Um. <clears throat> yeah, it was a bit of, a bit of a shock, really. Uh, I had no shoes on. Though. They wouldn't even let me put my trainers on. Um, but do you know what really worked well for me? It's because I've been on a bender for like ten days. I looked like an absolute state. So in the morning, when when usually the new the new boys get robbed, they took one look at me and thought he ain't got fuck all. Not going to bother with him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right, don't you <laughs> but yeah, so but do you know what? Prison can you can if you want to sit there and smoke spice all day until you get out, then you do that. But I wanted, I knew that this was like a a crossroad, a, a junction in the in my life where I was either going to continue like that for the rest of my life, or I was going to do something about it. So I got involved with an organisation called the Forward Trust and got got onto some. They're really good, actually. I got onto some some courses. Um, really got involved in them. You know, I was doing just getting on with it. Really keeping myself to myself. Obviously, lots of things. That, but everyone's got prison stories, you know, you know what I mean. So I wanted to ask you that today. I know you didn't really discuss them with our uh, friend Stansby, but can we talk about a couple today? You yeah, might have seen. Yeah. What, okay. Uh, what? Do I... I'll start. How was your first day settling in? Where you got a oh, sign? What your cell was like? Oh God, cellmates, well, 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 neighbours. Well, so um, when I, so we, we usually you go on the induction wing, but I was sent straight to house spot three because 
I, they said, have anyone got a drug problem? I was like, yeah, me. And they sent me. So at night, we're walking down there, and I said, miss, I, this is my first time in. Like, because don't worry, what I'm going to do is put you in with two people that it's their first night as well, so you'll be all right. I, she only said that to, so to get me in the cell with no arguments and shut the door. So these two geezers jumped up, and they're like, oh, what you got for me then, bruv, and all this? I was so tired, but what I like, like a couple of spanners. <laughs> yeah, like, one of them looked like a... Uh, the witch from Snow White, you know. <laughs> you know, that, you know that? And he goes, take my apple. Take my he, Oh, I hated him. I hated that. <laughs> Later on, he tried to pay someone half a, half an ounce of backy to put a hit on me. Half an ounce of backy? Yeah, but luckily the geezer went, you've never got fuck all. So, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> yeah. He was like, yeah. Mm. And the apple. He had this long old face. Oh, I hated him. So what did you say when they said, what have you got for me? I just said, well, I've got a prison T-shirt. <laughs> have it. And then just sat on, I just went to sleep. And they went, when we, when when the doors open in the morning, you're getting robbed. I was like, all right. Then. So, uh, and when the doors opened, like I said, they just came in and went, ah, it's not worth it. <laughs> so, yeah, that was all right. And then, uh, so when I, when I went out. And who, hold on, who were they who came in? What did they look like? Oh, I don't know. Some fraggles. <laughs> what have you got? <laughs> um, yeah. But it was, when I went out, honestly, the noise though was just like. Non stop. Yeah. Because as soon as that clock comes, they're like, oh, God, who's got this? Oh, I'll swap with this. Uh, I was like, I was like, what the f. Yeah. I, just, oh, I don't know. It was just, you know, but but like, like, like we were saying last night, Sean, that, you know, me and you in, in prisons, we wouldn't. We're not really the type, but it's amazing how you, you adapt. Your human instinct sets it. I mean, look, the people, I mean, do you know what? I read your book in prison and I thought, if he can handle it in there, I've, I've, this is nothing, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, yeah, it was just, uh, it was one of them things. I, um, But yeah, I, because because I, I don't pretend to be hard, well, I'm not hard. I've had my nose broken nine times. I had a bare knuckle fight. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that didn't exactly go well, did it? No. So I, I, I just, you know, I don't, I just, just kind of. Some people just like narcissism, whatever. Mm. It, nar Narcissist. Yeah, that yeah. them. I just, but some of them were right. And actually, and then I, uh, I set up a hair, hair cutting business. Before we go to that, yeah. So they come in. Oh, right, They yeah. abandon you because there's no hope for... Yeah, for, yeah. What do you do next? Go to breakfast? Uh, we don't really get... You get breakfast in the evening. Okay. What? Yeah, you get a tea pack in the evening with your cereal and that, so... What to have in the morning? Yeah, but everyone eats it at night because everyone's starving, Marvin. What? So you, so you come out your cell then when the yeah, door's open? Yeah, I'm just what, walking what, around... And what, is it like a day room? No, it's like a... You know, like a long spur. A long like, spur. So you've got three tiers. Three tiers. Pool table on the ground floor, and it just yeah. Sell. So who did you go? On, who were the first people you talked to? Well, I actually met I actually met a geezer from Maidstone, mm. and and he was like, "You're all right on this spur, but just it's sea spur that's really bad." And next 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 day, I got moved on fucking sea spur. <laughs> <laughs> what happened on sea spur? Well, because because it turns out <laughs> these two. The apple one and the other one. The witch. Yeah, he, they were holding some naughty knives for some Irish gangster. <laughs> and I didn't know about. So we got spun and the screws found all these knives. And because I'd only been in there one night. You got they blamed. Just, well, no, they were, trying, they were trying to say. So, so they just went, get him out of here, get him on Seaspur. <clears throat> so I had it all again. So just take us through it slowly. Uh, so the first day I'm on Seaspur. Um, I'm right. I'm just on my bed like that, writing a letter to me mum, just minding my own business. Seeing you were travelling. Yeah, just yeah, just like oh, it's lovely. Good time in China. We yeah, weather's really nice. <laughs> um, but and then and then this geezer came in, winked at me, picked up a knife, walked out, done someone with it, and then came back in and put it put it back under the towel. And I was like, all right, never mind anyway. No. And then. He's come back, and this other geezer's come in, like two absolute units as well, and they start arguing because he's used his knife without permission. And then, and then I'm like, and then one, and then one of them just bangs it, oh, and they're at it like, and they're 
having a right old tear up. And I'm like, Jesus Christ. And then, so I, so I've waited. They're smashing each other again. So I, I, the door's over that way. I'm, I'm penned in. So, so I've just ran, jumped on the other bed and ran out of the cell and thought, fucking ain't getting involved in that. Just let them carry on. So, yeah, it was just... What kind of things were they saying to each other? Oh, like, well, he didn't use, he, he, uh, didn't use it with his permission. So, so you didn't use it with my permission? Yeah, you fucking... Why are you stabbing if I need, my fucking Yeah, life. if I need it and it ain't there, what the fuck am I... You know what I mean? And what's the other guy saying? He's saying, shut up, brother, I'll fucking bang you. Like you do. <laughs> yeah, like all like that, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, matter. I just got good friends with one of them. He used to he he used to see someone in his cell, like who make him do stuff, like what? like yeah. He, he he's a really nice guy, but he's completely tapped. So if he doesn't take his meds, he there's a there's there's a guy that sits in his cell and says it to hurt people. Yeah, the voice in his head. Yeah. Was that the guy who took the knife, or the guy whose knife got borrowed? Knife that got borrowed. Yeah, he wasn't happy. He didn't borrow his knife, did you? <laughs> no, no, <laughs> so no. did he end up? Your, he was your cellmate in there, was he? Oh, he was. No, they were just just having it in that cell. Did Probably you have cellmates in there? Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, one one of them actually, uh, traveling boy called Wes. He was a really nice guy. He had really bad psychosis as well. Though he used to wander around at night and talk to the cell door. Say what? Like get away from here. Get away from here, oh, fucking. And once when I came in, he was shouting out the window, Dad, Dad, have a look at this fucking boy there. He's fucking out there doing all that. And I went, Where's? And I put my hand on his shoulder, and he was like, and he was like, I was like, Where's? We're in prison. And he was like, Oh. He thought he was, I don't know, it was just, but he was a nice bloke. Yeah. So that was one song. Did you have two? Yeah, it was a three man bang up. God, that was a fucking nightmare. When you're trying to watch Corey and someone, oh, it's just horrible, yeah. But, um, but you know, you just, your instincts sit in, sit in and you've just got to survive, haven't you? You only got one meal in the evening. Did you? <laughs> yeah, so so, so uh, you get um, well, you get you get lunch, which is like a bread roll and a penguin. Well, yeah, that's barely enough. Well, you, I, yeah, I know. And that's why people that's why people are always hungry in prison because you don't you don't get enough. But I, I was I was um, sometimes you get a donut. It's all right, but. <laughs> I, I was making um, roll ups, like skinny ones. Prison then, roll ups, yeah. Cool. Prison roll ups, and then buying people donuts off them. So I could end up with about seven donuts over the next bang up, which wasn't bad. But did that make you a target? Uh, well, by then I was all right because I had the hair cutting business and stuff like that. Tell us how you established your hair cutting business. Well, I just bought a pair of clippers for a tenner off, off Argos and, and, a, and, and a big unit called Darren used to cut. Be able to cut hair, so when everyone got paid on a Saturday, like they got your canteen, we used to charge like a quarter of backy for for Darren to do the haircut, and then we'd just split it, you know. So, so you weren't cutting the hair. I didn't. Even, I just bought the clippers. You were the the MD. Well, yeah, that's it. Yeah, and then I. <laughs> but uh, clippers allowed. Yeah, you're allowed clippers. Yeah, you're just not allowed the scissors with them. Obviously. I see. But um, but I I do remember this this travelling boy called Ned came into my cell once and. Because uh, it was a Wednesday, and we only do haircutting on a Saturday. Because uh, if I do it on a Wednesday, then people will take a haircut. You know, it's just us all getting money. Oh. So he came in and went, I need to borrow your clippers. He had slip back hair, looked like Fonzie. <laughs> and uh, he said, uh, I need to borrow your clippers. I went, well, it's Wednesday now, so you're going to have to wait till Saturday. He's like, no, I need them now. I was like, well, you can't have them now. You have to have a haircut on Saturday. And plus, I don't do him anyway. It's Darren does. He'll go and speak to Darren. He goes, wait there a minute. And he came back with two traveller mates. And he goes, give me a clippers. I said, no. And he pulled out a knife. Like he had it in his waistband like that, showed it to me. I said, put that away and we'll, we'll have a fight in here. Because I'm a traveller, not a mug. And then he walked off. But, I, but the thing is with me, I, I never forget about these things. And, um, you know, so... So three months went by and I was was like saying hello to him and stuff like that. And then one day I got back from the gym and I put prison clothes on, waited for him to go in his cell on his own, ran round, kicked the door open. He was by the sink like that. I didn't tell anyone on the wing or anything like that because I didn't want everyone to bait out and waited for him to turn around because I didn't want to snake him and then just fucking punched him. But 
my whole hand went in his mouth because he didn't have <laughs> it. So it didn't really work out. Because, and I punched him and it, because he had no teeth and that, it went in his mouth and then I had to pull it out and then he, t- and then it kind of went a bit wrong because I fell over and then he got on top of me and I was like, what are you doing? I said, trying to headbutt him and he's like, what are you doing? Calm down. And then he ran out of the cell. And that was it. So I didn't really, do, you know. But there was but, no repercussions off that move. No, he just thought, what was all that about? <laughs> Some Wally coming into it. Now. Yeah. So, yeah. But, uh, you know, it was my little victory, though. It's like, yeah, yeah. Just done ya. <laughs> did you ever see any joggings in there? Yeah. But I, I, did, see, I did see one that was quite funny. Because he, he didn't boil the kettle enough. <laughs> Sorry, so, <laughs> they're not funny at I all. I know, but, but he warm watered him. <laughs> so, so he just he just turned around. What was that? And he was just started standing there with his jug. <laughs> he didn't because you have to because you have to really you have to hold the button down to do it to really because otherwise it's just warm water and you'll just go like that. Someone will go right. Cheers <laughs> for the shower. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I see, uh, yeah, yeah I, see, I see a couple of them, um, but yeah. Any horrific ones? Um, yeah, but he got the wrong person because oh. he chucked it over the landing, and it was actually one of my mates' jacket. It went all oh, that, that was bad actually because yeah, that that went all that down. I could see it. Did yeah. it have the sugar in it? Yeah, that was oh. yeah. That luckily it didn't go on his face, but it went all down here. Yeah, and he was just standing in the wrong bloody place. That's the thing. Like the thing is with Elmley is it's quite because uh, because you get such. It's, such a mixture of people, like it can be and then very dangerous. Like, we had a guy in there, my mate Paddy said, um, what that guy over there, just just don't make eye contact with him. Because he'll be shouting all night and then it be whizzing out his cell and then he'd just run around all the time. And uh, I remember the screw come up to him when he sat on the pool table and he was like, Why don't you write down how you're feeling? Gave him a pen. And he just looked at him dead in the eye and just went, stabbed it in his head like that and just dragged it down like that. Mm. He didn't stay on the wing for long, but he, but he could have, see, see, you know, he could have serious, he was in the wrong bloody unit. So, yeah. Or, I'll tell you what, I, uh, there was a geezer in there called Rambo. He was, he was quite funny, but uh, he kicked off in the chapel once because he thought the screw would call him a dickhead, but he didn't. He was just going, yeah, he was like, Call me a dickhead. Anyway, I was in, uh, I was down the, um, you know, when you see the doctors, I had a bit of a cold, so I went to see the doctor. And you, you get like 30 people in a holding cell. Rambo's in there, isn't he, with, his, with, a, with a tank top. He was like a big unit, but he was like, he talks like this. You right? How are you doing? You right? <laughs> so, uh, and then I'm like, so the people started disappearing and Rambo's in there and he's staring at me the whole time. I'm like, and then, um, the last person's gone. It's just me and Rambo, but he's getting kicked out. He's he's going to he's going to the seg, so they're waiting for. And he keeps going up, knocking on the door. Miss, I uh, want to go back to my cell, please. Which is like, just can't, just don't worry. So he knows what's coming, and then I'm I'm sitting there like that, and then um, he's wearing a pair of shorts and a vest, and uh, he's just come up and sit sat next to me and goes, "Do I look silly in these shorts?" I went. <laughs> Hey, you look all right, mate, you know. Because don't look now, but how many screws are coming in? I went, there's three, two, and another two. He went, right, I'll take the first three, you take the other one. And I went, I just went out and went, miss, I'll go back, I'll go back now, <laughs> But yeah, it was really funny, I really liked it. But like, yeah. It's like, like we're, all sat in, we're all sat in a chapel. That was, and then like, he's come in and... I think it was Christmas. You go, all right, boys, yeah, it was shaking all right. All right, boy, just, I'm going to get a programme. And you get them off the screws. And the screw was just joking to his mate and go, oh, you dickhead. He goes, what? He goes, no, sorry, what was that, Rambo? He goes, well, he's just called me a dickhead. He was like, no, 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 he wasn't talking to you, Rambo. And he was just about to go mental. He's like, oh, well, that's all right then. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, you can get some characters in there. Um, I, I got a job in a library. Um, so that was an ideal place for me because I read a lot of non-fiction crime books. So, yeah, and I was always doing courses. Um, is, that how so you, is that how you found hard time? Was it in the library? My mate, Ginger Jamie, lent me that. 
Okay. So yeah, and then and then I bought all three when I got out. Oh wow. So yeah, it was just it's weird, isn't it? That he just said, read that, and yeah. then and now here we are. Yeah. Yeah. So that was really that, it, honestly, it really did. But you know, in times when you're just feeling low and you've. It, and then, no offence, but your situation was like, <laughs> God, I'm Shit. glad I ain't, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, and then, you know, just, it is what you make of it. My brother, were you in the same prison the whole, because you got sentenced no, to wait, eight, you served? Yeah, so, no, I, oh, no, I got sent, I actually got sentenced to three years in the end. Three so years, because yeah, they reduced three. it. Yeah, yeah. So I, I went to Rochester. Yeah. Um, what, still got, I carried on working in a the library there, which was good. And what, how different was Rochester? Uh it was all right. If that, that, down in there, there's a lot of like London gangs because they're, they're in county lines in Kent and stuff like that. So there was a lot of that, but um, I didn't mind it really. Cause so it's, much drugs you... in the... Yeah, because it all comes over the wall, you see. Was it... What sort of drugs? Oh, Weed, all, spice? Sorts, all sorts of Did stuff, you see people yeah. wigging out on space? Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and do, you know, do you know the weird thing is? In Elmley, they, they were smoking busker pan and it really fucked people up. Huh? People like screaming like girls and that. These two, these two brothers, mm. smoke some busker pan. What's, you know, what's busker pan? You know, like up for IBS. What? Yeah, they, they, they irritable bowel syndrome, right? Yeah, and they and and, and they were, I don't know what they were doing with it, but they were crushing it up and then smoking it, and then they were getting absolute. It was even these two brothers um, were smoking busker pan apparently when they were banged up. Decided they wanted to go out, so got dressed up, ready to go out clubbing. And then I had a tear up because who, about who was paying for the taxi. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was like, it, yeah. And do you know what the funny thing is? The moment someone discovered that you could crush up a busker pan and smoke it, suddenly everyone had IBS. They were fucking giving them to people. <laughs> like fucking, all, yeah, they were like, they, know, they were getting packs of them. Just everyone was nuts for weeks until they banned it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I know. Yeah, I've never heard that one. Yeah, I know. All the yeah. prison stories I've heard. Yeah, like, busker pan. Yeah, busker pan. Yeah. Wow. So, I don't know who discovered it. My mate Darren, that unit, he was he was massive. Like, and it, he smoked it and just went over like. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Wow. They banned it pretty quickly then. Yeah, they did. They yeah. Figured it out, yeah, because yeah. yeah, because they were giving it out like candy, <laughs> <laughs> just basically giving people free drugs. Yeah. What about self harm, suicide? Yeah, I. I do you know what? I'd, I know you're not. Um, the only time I've ever said something to a screw when I've been concerned about someone because if it, if it's not your business, don't get involved. But there was there was a young seventeen year old on the wing, and I felt really bad for him. His cellmates were bullying him. No, he wasn't seventeen. So he's like, but he, he looked really young. Um, and uh, they were telling him that he had to hang himself and stuff like that. And he was just really struggling. He wouldn't come out of his cell. So as I was walking past one, I just said, can you just keep an eye on thingy for me? Like, Cause that, that's all I can do. But yeah, I just felt like, yeah. And he was, yeah. Do you know why they were bullying him? Just, just, just people do it because they're bored. Yeah. I know. And they were just like all night to him, just hang yourself and he'd go and sit in the toilet. And it wasn't very nice for him really. First time and, and, and they would, yeah. And the screws, did they do anything? Well, hopefully. But that's all I can do is say, look, just, of course, you know, so. Anyone dying there while you were there? Yeah, one one guy that I was on a course with, actually. It's really sad. Um, and actually, it's a bad way to come out, like, to go in and never come out and to be out in a body bag. <sighs> because we were on Soch and they closed their spur down, but we could, it was so undignified. They just, they just carried him out in a, in a black bag. How did he die? Oh, did. Yeah. On what? Uh, pre gabs, I think, and stuff. Mm. But yeah, and then just that was it. Clean up his cell. Next one in. Someone else. Yeah. Bad though, wasn't it? I felt really like no one should have that. You know, he was all right when we were on the court. He was quite a funny bloke. Um, but yeah, he's just too much. Did you get in any more fights in prison? Um, yeah, with well, a Scouse YouTuber. I come across him in prison. Um, I was work. Oh God, what a moby this guy is! I'm telling you. Um, I 
So I worked in the prison library. Um, there's no screws about. It's the the boys can come in. They can read a paper. They can write letters to their missus. They can do. It, they can write record stories for their kids and stuff. It's a nice. Do you know what I mean? It, this geezer, who looked like his eyebrows were stuck on, came in and I didn't like his energy. Like he just just walking in like that. And he, these two women that work there, like as I say, they're not screws. They're sixty year old women just working in a library, and he's. Just, I was just watching him for a while, and like just leaning over, just trying to intimidate them, and they were, you know, they were getting quite upset. So I sort of, look, what, what are you doing? Do you want to sit down? And then it just got a bit of lemon, and um, and then he's like, yeah. oh, anyway. So I can, I'd, can I'd you do a scouse impersonation? He's like, what's you gonna do about it, me? No, no, no I can't. <laughs> that was close. Yes. Yeah, Who do you think you are? I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, I just, I didn't like this guy at all. I thought, do you know what? He's a fucking idiot. I mean, who does that? Like, do you know what I mean? He obviously, obviously got a problem with women or something. I just thought, you just don't, don't come in here and start doing that. Because it, it's not, you, you, you don't cause grief in the gym or the library because it's a place, look, you, in, you can come and just read, read a book. Just take yourself out of it. Do you know what I mean? This dickhead wants to come in and start. I don't know what I, I don't know why he was doing it, mate. I th he's a bit of a bully. I've seen him like that, but he wasn't gonna fucking do it to me. I and then and then so there was Macmillan cake day, and some of the boys have made some cakes, and um, so I went down to the gym to buy a few, and when I come out, there's Scouse again walking down the road like that, and he he's knocked one of the cakes up my hand, and it was one of them fucking cornflake ones. Like, the, oh, oh, do you know what I mean? Oh, they're the best. I would, I would, I'd never be able to. So, so we had a bit of a, a two and eight, and then, but then obviously, like the screws jumped in and all that, and and he was like, yeah, I'll get you, matey. But then, but it, <laughs> so since I come out, I see him all over the internet or whatever. I just thought you're a fucking idiot, and I see on one of his um, uh, like he just said, if anyone's got a problem with me, they can message me, ask my number. So I thought, right then. So I said, all right, mate, can I have your number? And he, and like, you know what I mean? And he was like, no, and blocked me. <laughs> and then and then I, I went through a mutual person and said, look, I'll have a fight with him on 3D Fight Club if he wants. And then nothing. So the challenge is that still out there, that challenge for oh, future 3D oh, Fight Clubs? He's all wank, no spunk. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I, I, you know what? He's a, he's a no mark, really. But I just, just his... Oh, I just seeing his videos, I thought, oh, do you know, what? I don't, I don't like. I see, I see him trying to intimidate people and stuff like that. I don't like that in someone. Do you know what I mean? He's a very yeah. snaky, weird guy. But anyway, uh, but um, no, I didn't. I, do you know what? I didn't really get in any any proper scrap. Like, because I just, I don't think people saw me as a threat. Do you know what I mean? I wouldn't, you know. So I just, just quite funny and just a bit weird and. <laughs> you know, just yeah. What was the craziest fight you saw? Oh, uh, well, it, these dealers were on the wing, right? And they were like, I didn't like one of them because he's a fucking idiot. But, and they were all in one three man bang up, but one of them was undercutting the rest of the boys. So, they, so one day, one of them ordered the other one to hit him with a bit of wood while he was asleep. Then the next day, they kicked him out of the cell. But this geezer. Don't fuck about, right? So instead of running off, he stayed on the spur. And for days he was walking round and they were going, we're going to take your canteen on Saturday. And he was like, all right, all right, all right. We're going to take your canteen on Saturday. And it was like, what the fuck's this guy doing? He's like, going to give his canteen? No, he fucking wasn't. What he was waiting for was his mates to come over from another block. They had dressed up as cleaners one day and put on the gloves and that and managed to get hold of a cleaner's top. So they've gone on, the screws let them on. They've gone waited in one cell, like all charged up, like ready to, to iron someone out basically. And then, so they've called him up and as he's gone up, he's got, he's got a knife under, like flicked, flicked under there like that. So they've all jumped on this geezer in the cell and he's come in, flicked it around and tried to slash his neck like that. But he's turned round and he slashed all like down there like that. And he came out and his claret, oh, it's just mayhem. For some reason, it always kicks off really badly on a Sunday. 
I don't know why it, why it, why it's why it's happened. To what them. store day? Saturday. Saturday, yeah. But Sundays, everything always. Yeah. Is it ever store day? Because that's debt settlement day. Oh yeah, day, that's, isn't it? yeah, yeah. Debt settlement day. Yeah, isn't it? You, so what? These two these two geese are quite funny. They were in debt all all week, and then they come up with a plan that when they went to get their canteen, they'd have a fight with each other <laughs> <laughs> in front of everyone. They're like like this, like that. And then, so they get dragged off down the sick. <laughs> that was funny, that was. So they wouldn't have to pay their debt? Yeah, they were yeah. like, what we'll do is, we'll, we'll look as if we're going to get the canteen. And when we stand there, because I ain't got a fuck off, <laughs> we'll just stand there and go, and then we'll, me and you will have a little little fight, and then we'll get off the wing, yeah. And yeah. what happens when they go back on? <laughs> oh, that's what I <laughs> Try and move around the yeah, system they try and, to avoid yeah. who they owe the money to. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So they've oh. gone on different house box or whatever. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, Rochester was... Wasn't too bad. I, don't know. I was still engaging with Forward Trust. Um, oh, and all, yeah. So I had the keys to the library box. So only I could open the library box on the wings. And I was a red band, so I could go around. So I used to charge the dealers like a certain amount to go in my canteen. To I didn't even look in the envelopes or anything. But so. When I opened the library box, there'd be envelopes in there and they'd just say uh, B Wing cell twenty four and I'd just go slip it under the door on my ra- on my rounds and stuff like that. What would you get for that? Well just just money on your canteen. How so, much? Well just 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 a little bit. But but if you get like a few people doing it and also that, that what they used to do is called rottle or rot rottle or something like that. Where not mate, I wasn't allowed to, but you can get a day release. Mm-hmm. So my mate was going out, the one that lent me, the, went and lent me your book, and he was bringing in a backy for me. Because I don't understand why people are still trying to import drugs into prisons when the profit margin on backy is just absolutely unbelievable. Because you know they've stopped smoking. Mm. So it cost £15 for a pouch of backy outside. When I was there, it was £200. What? Yeah, and now it's like probably 400 So you're saying more tobacco, less drugs? Oh well, yeah, more profitable. Yeah, more. Yeah. yeah, the profit margin. You want to be an entrepreneur in prison? Well, yeah, I came out of a nice new kettle, <laughs> like, like you know, a couple of nice bits, and yeah, yeah. because yeah, and I, um, yeah, so so we were bringing in three ounces at a time, and my old cocaine dealer from back in the day lived in the cell next to me, and he had a lot of lollies. So I just sell it straight on. So all I did was go like that, and then six hundred pounds on our canteen sheet. I mean, how do these and people... Then, and, then, and then, and the thing is, if I drank, if I'd have bring in six hundred pounds worth of crack, I'd be getting like another few years. I got, I got spanned, and they found three ounces of tobacco in my cell. I got nicked, and all I got was a suspended sentence of two days extra on my sentence. So I never even. That was it. That's someone snitched you out. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Mm, any idea? Mm, sort of, but I don't know what his name is. But I remember because because my man was negotiating negotiating over the price. He was like, "Well, I don't really want to." So I went to someone else and said, "Do you want this? It's coming in later." And then, funnily enough, I got nicked that night. Mm. So, but yeah, it's like I just thought the risk, low risk, high profit, and and I don't understand why. Why you know if you <laughs> just made sense to me. Definitely. Who was the most dangerous person you came across in prison? Well, there's a geezer from back home. Uh, we'll we'll call him Kane. Um, my brother knows him really well. Um, <laughs> I actually uh, I owed him a bit of money before when we were on the out, and um, I was ducking him, and he came round my house, and um, uh, and he knocked on the door, and I was like, oh no, it's Kane. So he's, he's opened it, and he's looked upstairs, made sure there's no one in. Anyone in? You right, mate, are you? I said, no, no one's in. He backhanded me. I went, go and put a fucking kettle on. <laughs> I went, I haven't got any milk here. He's like, you're fucking useless. You are. <laughs> he said, I better, I better have some milk when I come back. And then he just, but in prison, he was, he was just like, in Elmley, he was like the man. Like, he used to walk around and everyone would be like, oh, listen, Kane, I can sort you out that money later and, and all that sort of stuff. He's like, make sure you do. I don't want to be sticking it on your mum and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> like, like, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, he's just uh, started smoking 
spice, I think, and just went mental. Um, but there was one occasion where uh, he, he landed on a wing with a big parcel, a load of boys in, went in went in on him, and one of them hit him with a bit of wood. So I went to the gym with him and said, are you all right? Like, what's going to happen? He said, oh, nothing, it's all right. But he wasn't going to tell me. He was just waiting to find out who hit him with the wood. And the person that hit him with the wood was some geezer who was called the Money Muncher, who was some big unit. Him and Kane had a right old dust up and um, Money Muncher got done. Mm. So, but then when when he when when I see him in 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 Rochester, um, he just he was completely different. Like he'd gone mental. He was apparently hiding behind corners with a towel on his head, punching people like when they went past and stuff like that. Like, I, like he just and they put him in a safe cell, and he asked me to bite his fingers off. What? Yeah. Spice. Yeah, really fucked his head up. And because where his safe cell was, we were on the exercise yard, he always, these three blokes, he had, I don't think he knew them, but he just had a problem with it. And he was like a dog at the window. So they walked round in a circle. And when they got close to him, he was like, fucking man, run over, fucking man, fucking man. And then they, and they'd go quiet again and wait for him to go around. Fucking man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just standing by the window. Fucking man. <laughs> it, was, it was quite amusing to watch, but yeah. Was he on a big sentence? Uh... Yeah, yeah, he was in for an armed robbery, I think, or a robbery at least. Yeah, but yeah, but you know, he's yeah, but we we know him from back home. He's all, even when when we were kids, when we were playing football, um, you tackle him and then give him the ball back because <laughs> because you just didn't want no aggro. Yeah, but um, yeah, I I I'll tell you a story about him when when it because it, uh, we're all outside our local boozer. And um, these these geezers rang up and said, "Listen, we want a bit of packet." And he was like, "All right, I'll come down in." And uh, so the cars come. So there's two blokes in the car and a bird in the back. So Ken's leaned in to do it. He looked over and his ex missus in the back. He's gone. What's she doing in there? And they're like, uh. so he starts headbutting the driver whilst trying to punch the passenger. They're driving up, driving off, and his little legs are hanging out of the thing. And he's falling out of the car and they're running up, <laughs> just like, just, and then and then like they rang up and said, "Right, right, we're coming down. We want to meet you." And he just ripped his top off. Well, mate, you just met me, brother. <laughs> Bit the yeah. Hulk. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like that. So yeah, that. Um, and then uh, yeah, I got out in um, 2019. What was it like when you knew you were well, coming up to your release date? Uh, well, I've done an extra year, really. Because they, because of the leap year, they added an extra day onto my sentence. So instead of getting out on New Year's Eve, I got out on the second of January. Do you get? Does that make sense? So you did two days more. Yeah, I know it's annoying that because <laughs> of the leap year. Because if it would have would have worked out that I would have, I would have been out on, uh, yeah, New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve. Yeah, yeah you could have partied. Exactly. Yeah. So, but yeah, I um. Yeah, so I got out, went back to Maystone and was kind of like doing the same sort of thing, really. Um, so you didn't come out and not use again? Well, you... yeah, I, I, that's the thing. I, I thought, oh, I miss Maystone. I want to go home. And and it really was the wrong decision. Um, I had a, Luckily, I had a really good probation officer because I turned up completely pissed once. And she could have recalled me for that because I was like, a, like, I had to go to MPS, which is like high risk, medium, whatever. And I was like, come on, babe, don't be like that. She was like, <laughs> she was, she was like just go home, just go home. Um, yeah, and then... Come on, babe, don't be like yeah, that. Yeah, don't be, don't be like that. Yeah, sure, go home, I'll call you later. Then I then I um, got Nick drink driving in a stolen car while I was on licence as well. I, I mean, what, how stupid can you get? Um, I, managed to, I managed to get that squash, though, so... Because in uh, basically what happened is uh, um, the person who I stole the car from, I I paid them not to turn up to court. So, but when I went to court, um, my solicitor who told well, my solicitor who, who who advised me about stuff wasn't there. He sent some woman down, some posh young woman with nice teeth who didn't know anything about it. And I didn't know she didn't know anything about it. So when we had our pre-trial pre, 
pre like court thing, she said, so how you do, how you doing, Mr. Lee? And I was like, yeah, all right. The witnesses haven't turned up, have they? She goes, how do you know that? I said, well, because we paid them not to. She goes, what? Oh my God. I was like, you can't do that. I said, well, no, it's all right, it's sorted. She was like, oh, well, I can't represent you, Mr. Lee. I'm not having it or anything. I was like, what do you mean? What? Slow, just keep your voice down. Like, and she was, so she turned up in court, she, she had to go to court and say, I can't represent Mr. Lee anymore, which didn't look very good, did it? So I had to represent myself. <laughs> and I know. So she sat at the back and then my ex-girlfriend went to court with me and uh, but I knew what they were going to try and do is get it adjourned so that then they could try and get get the witnesses turned up. So I've said, so when in my statement, I said, oh, it's a bit of a liberty, really, they haven't turned up, you know? I mean, you know, wasting all your nice people's time, it's like, I've taken a day off work, you know what I mean? This is a bit, you know... It's inconvenient. Yeah. Yeah. And they were like, they were like, um, so can you do the something, something date? And I've gone, no, no, I can't. I got well, why not? And I, I didn't even think, it just came out of my head. I just went, I'm getting married. <laughs> and I like, what? Well, when are you getting married? And I was like, I turned around to the girl, like, my girlfriend, and went, babe, when are we getting married? And she wasn't paying attention. She was on her phone. She went, what? <laughs> so, and I was like, yeah. And they were like, all right, okay then. Can you do this day? I went, no. <laughs> and they were like, why? It's my honeymoon. <laughs> they were like, when's that then? I was like, When's that? Um, yeah. And then, so they were like, all right. <laughs> yeah. And I looked back at that posh lawyer and she was like, oh my God. I'm going I'm, I'm to lose my job here. Yeah. And then, uh, so so they basically they basically gave me a year's driving ban for the drink driving and squashed the other thing. Oh, the, wow. The twock, yeah. Taking the car about and stuff. And as I walked out, I said to that, to that lawyer, I'm like, that was all right, wasn't it? Do you think it's going for a drink? She goes, absolutely no way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah. It's right. Yeah. So, but, 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 I, but I felt myself sort of going down that. So probation, we agreed that I would go to Hull and go to rehab, which was probably the best decision of my life. And it was run by the Ford Trust. So... Here we, Are you keen on going, or did you? Yeah, feel listen. Bit... I, yeah, I wanted to, and actually, uh, it's amazing what what you, what you learn about your inner stuff and how, what what triggers these things and stuff like that. Because resentments are a big, you know. So, yeah. What was it like your first day in the program? Uh, um, it it was all. It was so it's residential. So it was it was all right. I just, I've always struggled, like, I just, yeah. Um, so obviously doing the life story, I just, I decided that, um, that I was going to give it my all and not let anything, so yeah, I said my life story, um, went to a few meetings, which I found interesting. Uh, yeah, just, just got on with it, really, I suppose. Um, made, met some amazing people. Some, unfortunately, aren't still in the programme, but others are. And actually, in whole, I only know people that are in recovery. I only associate with people that are in, or, you know, so it's just, it's amazing. Is that because if you hang around with people who are still involved with drugs, you might find yourself slipping back into no, that No, no, not at all. It's because it's, just... it's because that's that that's the only people I know because because I've come up there with a fresh start, and I've not i not you know so it's just it's brilliant. Like um, when uh, we we had art therapy, and when um, when whenever you had to draw what, what your fantasy was for the future, and um, my fantasy was not not a Ferrari or anything like. It was just to have a job, um, to have have like a wife and a family. Nothing, nothing, nothing major. Nothing, nothing more. Nothing less. Like, and I never thought that could happen. And now, 
Um, I've got a lovely like partner, like who honestly is amazing. Um, I still have. I uh, I come out of like we're going to counselling together because my mental health is is a bit. It's hard for her to understand. So to, for someone else to put it in perspective, like I mean about like having thoughts like jumping out of a window, like through the window, and, and stuff like that, and just saying stupid things as well like i just can't help it i go into like child mode like we were in um super drug one day and i was just standing there while she was looking at some makeup or something and and it was packed full of women and uh the woman come up to me and said do you need any help sir and i said oh no i don't but that lady over there needs some vagisil <laughs> and I, 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 I know that's the first time i've ever seen a go bright red and she marks me out the shop so it's just it i, I can't help it I, I don't that's strong i know yeah <laughs> it's, I, I do love her <laughs> yeah so this podcast some of our podcasts are very dark but this one has got a lovely romantic ending as we introduce savannah to you <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm savannah <laughs> Yeah, so, so you were telling us before we took a little break. Yeah. Uh, so this Tavana's my uh, partner, and uh, I can honestly say that I feel happy and content with, you know, with with life. And I never thought I could be. I feel some. I I uh, I still, you know, um, some. Like my impulsive, I just can't help it sometimes. Like um, I think we we went on a day trip with with the rehab in November, like to the beach, and I just stripped off and ran in the North Sea, like it was bloody freezing. Like, and then they were like, "You're gonna get," and I didn't have a towel, and everyone was like, "Why do you?" I just, I can't. I don't know. It's like a. And obviously, like, I'm sorry for embarrassing you about the... The Vagisil. The Vagisil, it wasn't, <laughs> you know. It's just, yeah, but, but, so, so, but Savannah's so, she's just understanding and, like, when I get all, like, ooh, ooh, she's like, just nothing, it's all right, we're all right, we're all right. And we're going on holiday to Italy. Mm. And uh, in, in, when, because when, cause before I got this new job, so I... I work shifts, 12 hour shifts, sometimes nights and days, um, working for a renewable energy company. Um, but before that, I, because of my criminal record and stuff, I couldn't get a voluntary job. We tried to volunteer at Christmas to, in a homeless shelter. Couldn't do that. I got, I applied for McDonald's. Got to, and I, and I was just a bit kind of, cause do you know what? I owe a lot to Paul Stansby because i done a po podcast with him because I was doing painting here and there sort of thing. And I said, I'm all right, Paul, I'm all right. You know, as long as I'm not going backwards, you know, not using Colombian naughty talk anymore or or or, or, or committing crime or, or behaving in a certain way, borrowing money and stuff like that. He said, it's all right. It's all right to not go backwards. It's all right to be standing still, but just make sure you don't get planted. So since that, since I, I met that amazing guy one day, since then, I've really tried to enhance my life. We've got we've got a flat, haven't we? And it's all pink, obviously. <laughs> yeah, she's even painted the fridge pink. Um, we've got two guinea pigs called Barbie and Miley. I didn't name them, but yeah, but, but it's all right. And they're like, I'll, and we're just. Do you know what the best thing for me is doing? Working from six till six, coming home cooking chicken fajitas or something, or Savannah's a vegetarian, so I get her a meat substitute. But then, and then just, just watch, watch the soaps, go to bed early, wake up and do it all. It's just that, it's just fantastic. And I, I never, I just feel so brilliant. And, and, and the amount of stuff that I learned at, at rehab about myself, and that, that's why I said at the start about um, the, 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 the childhood, because it used to sort of shape even the way I walked. But I've, I've, these resentments like I had towards my mum, and obviously I still got some. But I've managed to make peace with with that. Um, 
you know, uh, I, I did actually, I owe a lot to that rehab because I left the, um, I left, because my license conditions were that I had to stay at the rehab, but I left and then got recalled. So I actually ended up in whole prison during COVID, um, when COVID first hit. And then, so it was 23 and a half hour bang up, like, which was quite intense. Um, uh, so one, one day you're allowed a shower. The other day you're allowed to exercise for half an hour. And I'd done four months. I, I finished my license there because then I could go back to the rehab and finish what I started. And, um, yeah, it was just that four months was longer than the, the whole sentence I'd just done before for the, for the arm robbery. So, Did you have your own cell or you locked up with? No, I locked up with someone, yeah. Just one? Uh, yeah, just what? Yeah, it's two. Yeah. How long uh, did you get along with that person? <laughs> that would be a nightmare, wouldn't it? Oh, what, oh no. hours. One of them, he was like, he's a, a bit of a fucking weirdo. Like in the mornings, I like to have the music channel on. I'm not saying I dictate the TV or anything like that, but it's nice to have a bit of it's just sent to yourself sort of thing. But he watches all these cartoons and that. Oh. I know. And then so one day I got up extra early and put the music channel on, and he's like. Whoa. And then, like, she's, we, you have in-cell phones. So he's gone on the phone to his mate and going, yeah, he's got the music channel on again, kid. I'm like, I can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> like, That'll be getting turned off in a minute, mate. I'm like, no, it won't. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, so he come off, went to turn it over, and I turned, I got up and turned it over again. And he just went huffing and started colouring in in his book. I thought, you idiot, you know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah. First cartoons in colouring. Yeah, just, oof, and then I could hear him down. <laughs> probably angrily colouring in. What was his favourite cartoon? Oh, I don't know, he watches all sorts. It's a bit nonce, really. <laughs> <laughs> Mind you, I do like SpongeBob. SpongeBob SquarePants. Yeah. That's actually aimed for adults, though. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. It's so got probably. adult humour. He watches it every Saturday morning, it's yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think Patrick's brilliant. He is, isn't he? <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I'm not the only one glad. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. So yeah, yeah. It was, but when I when I came out, re-engaged in the in 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 the program and um, got my own like place in Hull. Because the thing is, I thought, what's the point in going back down? I miss my brother and, and Pat and Liam and stuff like that. Um, my sister's at uni, and it's you know. So I just thought I'm going to give it a go because I've got a really good network of people in Hull. Um, so, um, my friend Barry, that was who I was doing the painting for. He also done a podcast with Paul, uh, which is really good. Um, and he's doing really well and it just seems, seems right for me. Mm. Um, and then, uh, so then obviously I met Savannah and, and then, uh, and what was that like? Love at first sight. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, no, do you know what? We, we, she's just, she's just amazing in her own self. Yeah, and what do you think to all his antics? I think I'm not a judgmental person at all, so I don't see that as being yeah. as, as defining who he is at all. I think I just see, I always say I see Stephen rather than Stevie, and he yeah. hates me calling him Stephen. But to me, Stephen is like underneath it all. Like he's yeah. not a bad person at all, and I'm, I don't judge anybody. So, how far into the relationship did you find out about his history? Everything, like maybe like a couple of months in. I want to say, yeah. yeah. A couple of months in, um, but it didn't bother me at all. Good. I was more intrigued. I was like, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm interested in the sort of stuff. So I was like really intrigued. But some things you didn't really want to tell me, did you? Like about prison. Like when I, I asked you about prison stories and all that, that you just said you would never tell me. And I was like, oh, what, what was prison like? And he's like, I don't want to talk about it. So yeah. I've, I've learned something new today as well. But yeah, um, yeah, it was. I don't judge you at all, do I, sir? And anyone that does want to judge him, I'm like, yeah, in, in his corner all the time. Like, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. So, so. And last night we had a lovely meal, and um, we looked like the couple from the the retro cafe in Pulp Fiction. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was. It's been. It's been lovely uh, coming up here and meeting you guys and that. Oh, it's been honestly, it's been amazing. Yeah. You're absolutely. But I, I just, do you know what that 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 picture I drew in in art therapy and in rehab, like, you know, it's 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 real and. I can't believe it, and I, 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 
like in the back of my mind, like, because I always have negative thoughts. I think I don't deserve, you don't, but I do. I, I you know, it's it, it's happening. And um, Tavana's just lost her mum a couple of months ago, and she's she's really tough for her, but she's 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 just so amazing. And I um, I just uh, I. I I don't know. What I'm lost for what. I just, Aww. I just, I, I, you know, I just, I've never felt like like I wanted to change wholly for someone and before, and I and I really do love her, and I, so yeah. It's like you've gone through all that, and earlier on you said you know the, you drew down what you what you wanted. Yeah. You know, a good woman and family, and and um, you're not grasping like everyone else is grasping. In yeah. yoga, it teaches you non-attachment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It That's sounds it. like you've detached, you've got what you want and you're happy with that where everyone yeah. else has got, is anxious because they've got to get this, got to get yeah, that. Yeah, put yeah, all this that... pressure on themselves. Yeah. But you you finally, after going through some harrowing experiences, yeah. just got to such a good place. Yeah, because yeah. I'm just I'm just grateful, you know, for, for what I've got. And it's, you know, it, it, you know we, we, we bought a car. Um, it's, not, it's not an amazing car. But I'm proud that we we got that together. Sav's insured on it um, because she's failed a driving test eleven times. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but she will pass. You, got you one will. Next, yeah. month. Yeah. next month is my pass. So, <laughs> have you got it booked in for next yeah. month? Then? 6th yeah. Sixth of July. Sixth so. of July. Yeah. That's bad luck to tell people. Oh no! Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I'm, just, I'm excited for it. But I need maybe this will come out after that. So yeah. 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 There we go. Maybe the pass. pass pilot. <laughs> yeah. That's right. So it's yeah, just you know just little things like that, and then like um. Yeah, just just having a job, because uh, you know, I think I think people think just because someone's been to prison, that that um, you know, that that they're just gonna let them down. But actually, it's completely opposite. Don't get a lot of opportunities. So when you do get one, you're really grateful for it, and you and you give it your everything. You know what I mean? So. Because you've effectively been at rock bottom, yeah, I guess. exactly, yeah, yeah. When you realise a good thing, you won't let it yeah, go. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. So it's just every little thing in life. I just, I just appreciate it more, and I've got really good people around me. Um, so yeah, and and Sav's my best friend, and it's, You're my it's best just friend as well. Oh. Oh. <laughs> but you know, I it, before I'd always be like, I don't know, just always. But I don't. I I love nights staying in, eating whole nuts. I'm getting fat. <laughs> <laughs> so, but we're, we're, we're doing a race for life um, for Sav's mum, Jill, next month. So we need to get back running, actually, don't we? We've raised a lot of money, though. We've raised like £800. Yes, that's sweet. really good. Yeah, yeah. So, but bless her. She's, you know, she's really, she's a very strong young lady and she does a lot for people. When she was 18, she got an award for, 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 for being involved. She's always done stuff off her own back to help people, homeless people and stuff like that. We, so, you know, what an amazing person. And she definitely. really gets it. She's not judgmental, um, you know. And we, 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 we're both just as strange. Like, we'll be laying in bed and I'll be like, do you think dogs know they're dogs? <laughs> <laughs> and and we've, we've both got an alien tattoo because we believe in the aliens. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, see, we've both got one exactly there. I know. Have so, you seen aliens hmm. together or...? Well, well I've, I, have you ever read a book called The Day After Roswell? No. Oh, my God, do you want to know what? Yeah, they're happening. They're coming. <laughs> they're coming? Yeah. Well, well, yeah. the thing is, they do come out, with, but, like, we, we went to Beverly to go and have some lunch, right? Do you remember that day? Oh, that was funny, that one. I, well, no. That was, quite a, that was quite a really random comment, yeah. Well, um, so I came out. And I was thinking to myself, and I said, babe, I've got to tell you something. She was like, what? I said, I think I may be Jesus. But my, because I was like, basically what's happened is I've come back, but last time God sent me back, I was a gobshite and told everyone. So that's why, like, so now he's not told me. I, I, it was only a thought for, like even today, like I woke up at five in the morning in Liverpool, went for a little walk. And then, um, but I saw a dead cat on the pavement, but it was a black cat. So now all day I'm thinking I'm cursed by a witch or something. And they put it, I know, it's just, she had to tell me. He came that, back and was like, I've been cursed. I've been cursed. I've yeah, seen a dead so cat. So it's just, 
But she, but she rationalises. I just roll with it. I'm like, what? Yeah. Which would that be? No, no. <laughs> it's him again. It's him, isn't it? He's been up here so long. <laughs> Honestly, if you see him, you could, yeah. I'll try and find gonna him. Gonna rob you in the morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Gonna rob you. <laughs> yeah. So, so how can the viewers support you guys or follow you on socials or contact you? Um, well, yeah, I'll tell you what, actually. If, if anyone's had similar experiences to me to send me a message on Instagram it's uh what is it Stevie Lee is it 19, recently 1984 Stevie Lee 1984 yeah because I do you know what I'd actually like to say something to the person that um that done that to me and actually do you know what uh it robbed robbed me it basically you didn't topple me in the end did you so you nearly did but because I, do you know what? I, I feel sorry for you because I think you really need some help to do that to someone. Because you, you're obviously in a lot of trouble yourself. Um, and I hope you do find help, and I hope you don't do it to anyone else. Uh, yes, I still think about it sometimes, but I'm gonna marry this girl next to me, and I'm gonna have a family, and I'm gonna be alright. So that's what I'd like to say to you. So, you, you know, you didn't end me. You just rocked me for a little bit, that's all. And do you know that person is out there? Or I know, yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. So, yeah. It's, you've got the most supportive girlfriend. I know, ain't she amazing? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So cool, yeah. I've got to talk about your uh, minus stars and your... Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, my dad might watch it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, how many, what am I on now? You're a man of seven now. Oh, I can't, what, seven? <laughs> we, we watched that programme last night and there was that blonde girl, so that's my oh, right, tip. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to explain your star system? Do you want to explain Sir, <laughs> so, we've got like a mini mouse like reward chat that's made for kids. But um, <laughs> we, are, we collect stars. So when like we do something naughty or we do something good, we each get a star or like minus a star. When, when we get to 10, we each get a prize, don't we? Yeah. But every visitor we have to our flat, I feel, I feel like we traumatise every guest. Like they walk out <laughs> like, what the hell have I walked into? But like, <laughs> they find it really funny. So, But we just did it as like a serious thing. We take it very seriously. Because you're giving an example of an infraction. Well, well, I don't, well uh, they're a bit harsh. What do you mean? Well, I'm um, like looking at... I think they're all right. What, looking at girls? So, for example, yesterday we was in Tesco in town in Liverpool and <laughs> there was this, like, girl looking at some cookies and it was like that. No, I just looked at Looking at her and I was like, right, man is two stars. <laughs> but then I do, like, every time I pass, like, builders, I'm like, because I love a builder, I'm like, oh, he's real fit and it's like... Yeah. So I get, like, man is, man is a couple of stars as well, do yeah. I? But, yeah. But um, <laughs> my, one of my prizes was she went out in London dressed as Britney Spears. She looked like a right sort. <laughs> so I, so I said, so I got ten stars. So I was allowed. So Britney Spears was going to knock on the door one day, and she still hasn't. <laughs> so, <laughs> she, yeah, still waiting for Britney Spears to come. Out. <laughs> so, so even when I win, you know. So uh, yeah, yeah, one, one of the prizes was bat tickles. Won it for ten. And I got five minutes with my nails. It's supposed to be ten. Bat bat tickles. He yeah. likes to just like me to scratch yeah, him with my nails. Her nails. I mean, they are they are amazing nails. <laughs> yeah. <Thank> yeah. You. <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah. So uh, I think things are all right. I'm, we're content with what we've got. We are, and you know, so. What a lovely note to end it on then. Exactly. So please let us know in the comments what you have thought about this video. If you have been through something similar, please reach out to Stevie. And, you know, there are options in life and you can be inspired. And talking to someone, if there's a forum especially, may be particularly helpful for people who've been through that. And otherwise, give us, give us a big hug, man. Thank yes, you. thank yeah, you for coming. Thank you so much. Cheers. Thank you. Oh. Oh, wicked. Oh, big old sign. Oh, come here. Oh, Thank you. Thanks so much for having me on. Yeah. Oh, I know.